Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, the fruits of your sacrifices in the spirit. And as a result, praise your heavenly Father in heaven. God is doing great things in this place and we honor him for what he's doing week after week. There is a building, there is a conformity we are being molded into something. The Bible says it does not yet appear what we shall be like. But I want you to know that God is making men in this place. This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. This is the way you father me. I love the way this is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. This is the way you father me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Teach us tonight. Build us. Make us mighty men. In the name of Jesus Christ. My first encouragement tonight is that please listen. Never get familiar with what God is doing in this place. When you become familiar with anything you commonize it and it stops blessing you. When you become familiar with anything at all, you lose the anointing, you lose the grace, you lose the efficacy in that thing. I know that we've been coming here doing this again and again. Please, can you play strings? Years after years after years we've been doing this thing. But there is something the Holy Spirit is doing. And it's important for us to study, study what he's doing in our lives. Don't just get caught up. Many of us have incorporated this day in our activities. And once it's Friday, we know that it's dedicated, coming for koinonia, and so on and so forth. But I really want us to understand that God is doing something. If we do not understand this, it will be difficult to submit to the dealings and the teachings of the Spirit. These teachings are supposed, it's a programming. It's producing something out of our lives. Hallelujah. God is making objects of praise out of our lives. And although this is like a factory, there is a making process. If you stay on course, not even you can stop what you will become. There's an army rising up. 
You're that I need rising up. There's an army rising up to break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, use me as your battle hearts. I don't just want to waste my time listening and listening for nothing. Use me as your battle axe. The Bible says, Ye are my battle axe and my instruments of war. God is training us to wreck havoc in the kingdom of darkness concerning our lives and our destinies. Go ahead and pray. Use me as a financial battle axe, as an apostolic battle axe, as a prophetic battle axe. Let my edges be so sharpened, O oh God, that I will do mighty things for the kingdom. Let my generation bless the Lord that I was born. I submit to your dealings. I submit to your word. I allow it to transform my mind. I allow it to influence my decisions. There is one cry in my heart every time I prepare to come here. And that cry is that nothing and no one will stop what God is doing in our lives. You may not realize the extent of the revolution that is happening from this city and from this place and through our lives. But when God is done with us, then the world will know they will see an example of what God can do with men who are yielded. It may not look like it. The Bible says, I reckon, Romans 8:18, 8, that the sufferings of this present time, the constraints, the sacrifices you may have to pay, the, the resistance, the pain that you will have to go through, are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. I can see with the eyes of my spirit. I can hear the sound of the new church rising. I can see the rising in the thousands. They're coming from afar, coming from afar. I can hear the sound of revival, and I know That the hand of God is upon us, yeah. and I hear the sound of revival spreading all over, spreading all over. Oh.
do with us, O God, that which has been written in the volume of the book. Let our generation be salvaged from the bondage of corruption. We make ourselves available. Prune us. Build us. Forge us, O God. Make us mighty men of power. Make us men of wisdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight I want to share something that I believe will change our lives forever. And I want us to please pay attention. See, when, when you understand the ways of God, you will love God more. When you understand the principles of the kingdom, and you see how that your life becomes predictable. Hallelujah. Then you will know that no power in existence can really tie down your destiny. It doesn't matter what the disadvantage has been. Just stay. There is a force. The Bible says how forcible are right words. There is a force that no power, not your background, not your mistakes, not your limitations can resist. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to just pray, just this one prayer, and say, Lord, help me to be attentive tonight. I throw away familiarity. I embrace your word with the heart of a child. See, Baba Balabaush. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the Lord laid this message tonight, I was very excited because I know that this message tonight will apply to almost everyone, if not everyone. God has been teaching us all through this month of July strategies how to come into the realm of greatness, influence to contend for that relevance. And I pray that these words that we receive will not stand against us in the days to come. That ten years from now you will not stand and still be a failure and watch those who listen to what they are listening now. The same thing you are hearing. Many of our parents ignored opportunities like that. They kept laughing and mocking at those who were serious. And look at the heritage many of them have passed on to us right now. Suffering, pain, trouble, curses, yokes. They had every opportunity that every great man has today. But like many of us are doing, they did not pay attention. Being distracted by all kinds of things. But tonight I pray that no matter how hardened your heart is, that for once you will love your destiny enough to pay attention. The beautiful thing about life is no one will pay your price for you. No matter how stubborn you are, no matter how hardened you are, you can argue today, you can laugh and scorn at what God is doing, but the day of reckoning will come. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. This is a, this is a bailout. It's, it's an exemption program. God is exempting many of us from so many things. Hallelujah. Kaunang Allah Shine Abani Saborai Shine Abani Salama Shine Awan Kesu Chata Kaunang Allah Shine abani saborai Shine awan kesu chata Shine awan kesu chata Thank you for your love 
We are not better than those who are going around in ignorance, confused. Listen, with what you know now, I'd like you to imagine the way your life would have been without the knowledge you have now. Did you know that there are many people just like you used to be and they are equally confident, believing that there is a great destiny waiting for them? Hallelujah. But we thank God for His grace. Galatians 6 verse 9. I want to share something very powerful. Two people please. Mighty revelation tonight. Any two people? Just two gentlemen. Come sir. Thank you. Please stand here. Any other person? Yes sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. By the grace of God we have been taught the revelation of the things that God desires to do in our lives. Please follow me. We have been taught that God has an agenda and that he seeks to make us ambassadors. That there is a prophetic destiny for everyone. Say after me, I have a prophetic destiny. Say it, I have a prophetic destiny. And this is a revelation of the prophecy over our lives. Hallelujah. That there is something God wants to do. There is something God wants to make out of us. There is a debt that we owe our generation that we must pay in our lifetime. And that God is trusting us. Hallelujah. So this is prophecy. And on the other side, we have the manifestation and the fulfillment of this prophecy. Are you following me tonight? When we begin to walk in the experience of that which has been spoken concerning us. So many of us have been taught what it is that God has written and said concerning you and your life and family and destiny. And through the eyes of prophecy we can see that which God is going to do. We have in our minds a picture of the kind of destiny. But what I want to teach tonight is how to manage the seasons between prophecy and their manifestation. This is the greatest in my opinion the greatest revelation that you need to cap up these teachings on influence and greatness and the kingdom because it is through this journey brothers and sisters that many fall by the wayside are you getting my point it is through this journey that many never make it there there is it's like a marathon so many people hundreds of people standing with all of their, their athlete apparels. But in the final analysis at the end, only maybe less than 1 or 2 or 3% of those people ever arrive at the finish line. And I want us to finish strong. Hallelujah. Many of us are at this season of our lives and we've been praying, fasting and say, Lord, explain to me what meaneth this thing. What is the mystery behind the things that are happening in my life? What season am I in? Please listen tonight because God is about to speak to you. Galatians 6 verse 9. Please read everybody. One more time. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in what? Hold on. In what? There is a timing in the spirit called due season. For in due season, not any time, do not be weary in well-doing. I'm building up from what I shared last week. For in due season, we will reap. But there is a condition. What is the condition? If we that means if we faint, what will happen? Although the due season will come, but we will not reap. Hallelujah. So there are two things there. There is a due season and there is a call for endurance. Call for strength. Call for continuity. 
Hallelujah. One of the most disturbing aspects of the kingdom, the principles of the kingdom is the concept of timings and seasons. There are very few messages in the body of Christ that attempt to address the issue of divine timings and the seasons of men's life. Yet the Bible talks a lot about the things that happen under the sun. And that anything under the sun is governed by times and seasons. Say after me, times and seasons. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 gives us an extensive description of the revelation and the power of times and seasons. And how that these things hold the key to our manifestation in this earth, in this realm. And that means if we do not understand spiritual timings, if we do not understand seasons, we may be equipped with the principles, but we will faint because we do not realize that God is working even at those times and seasons. So I want to teach on certain things that will bless us tonight. The Bible says for us not to be weary in well-doing. Hallelujah. He said for in due season we will reap. Last week I began to talk about how that the Bible gives us a mystery that time and chance happen to them. You remember that teaching? Hallelujah. And so that our, our, our part of the equation is not to sit down and keep waiting for the time. The Bible already gives us a guarantee that time and chance will happen to everyone. So rather than sitting down and waiting, where will my turn come? We spend the time doing what? Sharpening our abilities. So that when that time comes, we will be ushered into the realm of greatness, never to come out again. If you believe it, say Amen. Let me talk about two concepts and then we'll build. Number one, write this word down, waiting. W-A-I-T-I-N-G, waiting. One word that gets believers scared in the kingdom. Many people have preached all kinds of messages, but tonight I want us to examine these concepts. I do my best by the leadership of the Spirit to make sure that we leave no stone unturned. As far as the journey to our destiny and our success is concerned. Waiting. One of the hardest things that can happen to a believer is to enter a season of waiting. It can be so frustrating. It can be so painful that it will take the ability and the strength of the spirit for you to survive that season. Please take note of what I'm sharing. No matter how anointed you are, no matter how great you are, if there is a prophecy upon your life, hear me, between that prophecy and the manifestation of that prophecy, a time will come in your life when you will step into this season of waiting. And it's important I teach you how it works in the kingdom. Otherwise, when you enter that season, you may be so confused and you will abort destiny. Not knowing what is happening behind the scenes. Is somebody getting blessed already? Because many of us right now are in this phase as I speak right now. There are individuals who are at these periods of their life and truly they are confused. Because this season rattles your convictions. Everything you have believed comes under the test when you come to this season. Your ideologies, your beliefs, your prayer life, your dexterity in the spirit, your endurance, everything you have ever acquired through the world will come on that test. And if you cannot stand that test, brothers and sisters, you may stand from here and see Canaan, but you may never enter it. The fact that you have seen the vision, the fact that you have had the dream is no guarantee the fact that God spoke to you is no guarantee that you will arrive there. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? You saw yourself a mighty evangelist. You saw yourself a mighty apostle. In your dreams, you see crusades. 
you see a lot of things in your dreams you have seen that you are a financial apostle you've seen yourself doing mighty things for the kingdom i want to announce to you tonight that between the prophecy and its manifestation are stages and principles and one of those stages is called the period of waiting and if you do not understand these brothers and sisters you may never arrive there Proverbs 13 verse 12 Proverbs 13 verse 12 Let's hurry up tonight Open your heart Hallelujah Now the Bible explains to us You see, look up please I've spent my life not just studying on the kingdom But studying about man Because I'm a man and I, I like to know what, what my, the components of my, my, my creation, my build up. I like to know what my strengths are. Not as a, my personality, but the general man. I like to know who man is. What are his limitations? What are his predicaments? What are the vulnerabilities that can befall man? This revelation helps me to know where to lean on God more. Hallelujah. And here and there I have found certain inevitable weaknesses that are fabricated in man. And it will take us understanding those limitations. And leaning on the strength of God to supplement for our inadequacies at that time. Otherwise we will not last. One of it is this simple scripture that many of us have read again and again one to read hope deferred makes what when you postpone hope when expectations are not met the bible says it can affect your spirit man are you reading it here the word heart there's the same word spirit when you hope for certain things by our natural design we love winning we love achieving we love accomplishing things are you getting my point we love seeing a sign of progress in our lives is someone getting what i'm sh I'm, I'm saying tonight the bible says when that hope that we have that drives us into destiny when those expectations that we have are not achieved when it is deferred that means when it is postponed the bible says it has an effect not just in your physical body it does not just create fatigue in your physical body it affects even your spirit man he said but when desire comes, it is a tree of life when you achieve your goals and you hold on to it there is the joy that fulfillment and accomplishment brings in every man hallelujah that means when the waiting period between your prophecy and its manifestation gets too long if you do not understand the technology and the provision that has been made in the spirit to carry you through that process you may never arrive there are you getting what i'm saying although anointed although born again the bible tells us that there is a there is an inadequacy that is in man that man does not have the, the ability to endure to suffer long forever that means a time comes in the equation of your life when your patience gets stretched out no matter how good and godly you are that means there must be a technology in the spirit that is able to hold you and take you to the place of destiny say amen now there are two dimensions to waiting and i want us to look at it number one is that waiting so that we don't confuse ourselves here waiting can be a demonic strategy to delay and limit you from fulfilling your destiny in Christ. We must get this. It's very important. Waiting 
can be a demonic strategy. Please write it. It can be a demonic strategy to delay and limit you from fulfilling your destiny in Christ. I must balance this straight up so that many of us do not sit down and allow the devil delay our destinies forever and then get convinced because if the word of God is not rightly divided, the devil can use that it is written and convince many of us now who should be preparing for miracle service next week and say, Lord, an end comes to this. There are certain periods of waiting that are not divine. They are not initiated by God at all. Are you getting my point now? They are strategies from the kingdom of darkness to delay and limit us from entering our prophetic destiny. That kind of waiting is called delay. Write it down. The name given to that kind of waiting is delay. Delay. Satan's strategy to limit you and hinder you and stop you. Paul said once and again, I desire to come to you, but Satan hindered us. Satan can hinder men. Then number two, the second dimension is that delay can be a divine orchestration. Please get this. You must get this. That there are two dimensions to look at waiting in the kingdom. All of our teaching is within the context of the kingdom. That there is a waiting process and period that is orchestrated by the kingdom of darkness to limit us. And the name given to it is delay. But that there is a waiting period. There are these seasons that are divine orchestrations. Lamentations 3.25. Can we look at it very quickly? Is someone getting blessed already? Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, guys. You soon go and sit down. Okay, just go, just go, just go. Oh, bless you. So you can be writing. It's very important that you write. Lamentations 3.25. Are we there? Everyone, please look up and read before you continue writing. One to read. The Lord is good unto them that do what? Not wait on Him. Wait for Him. Wait for Him. It's a very difficult thing to wait. Very, very difficult. And this divinely orchestrated period of waiting is called process. Write it in the kingdom. It's called process. Process. So there is a difference between waiting as a process to your destiny and waiting as delay from the kingdom of darkness to destroy you. And you must sustain the ability to discern so that you know whether to align and receive grace and might from God or to stand and take authority over the activities of darkness. Hallelujah. Process. Very important. You will come to this period of your life whether you pray for it or not, is part of the things that you will find. And I'll be showing you from scripture how that many people messed up when they got to this season. Let me give you one example. Remember the nation of Israel. Hallelujah. They came out. There was a prophecy given to Moses. Even Moses, their leader, did not enter the promised land. Look up. Did you know that God never told Moses he was going to die on the way? Is that true? The prophecy that was given to Moses was that he was going to lead the people from the land of bondage into the land flowing with milk and honey. God never told him somebody will take out the baton. But between Egypt, brothers and sisters, and Canaan, only two people from that generation were able to make it. Only two people. They all had the prophecy. They rejoiced. 
they joined Moses after the, the, the parting of the Red Sea to sing. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his rider, because it had not stretched their patience too much, but they came to a point. Look at all the things they did in the wilderness, because they did not understand this operation. And listen, if you do not learn the lesson, you will do the same thing. It's easy to talk about them. Thank you, Jesus Christ. A few thoughts about waiting that I want you to note. Number one, in the kingdom, please make sure you note that we are talking with respect to the kingdom. In the kingdom, waiting is not the absence of progress. In the kingdom, waiting is not the absence of progress. For many of us, our concept of waiting is to stand still, known to be motionless. But that's not the way it works in the kingdom. When you enter the seasons of waiting in the kingdom, it does not mean absence of progress. It also does not mean absence of advancement. That when you are in the seasons of waiting in the kingdom, it's not the same thing as saying you are in one spot, not making progress. To you, you think you are in one spot because there is no physical evidence to measure your advancement. But I'm telling you right now that behind the scene, there is a lot of advancement taking place. Number two, waiting in the kingdom is not necessarily delay. It is the process of preparation. I'm taking our time to read it because I don't want us to miss it. You'll notice in the last few weeks I've been teaching very carefully, reading almost directly from my notebook here because I don't want us to confuse and miss words and then for our online people, I want them to follow on thoroughly. Waiting is not necessarily delay. It is the process of preparation. Number three. Look up. I want to explain something now about waiting. One of the biggest things I've seen in the lives of people, and please listen, God is about to minister directly to us now, is that because we have expectations for something great about our life, we postpone all of our joy and gladness and shift it. Are you getting my point? To the future. So that we will take advantage of that joy when we arrive. And then we starve ourselves of joy during the waiting period. Are you getting my point? But the Bible tells us that the vehicle that carries strength in the kingdom is joy. I want to show you why a lot of people never arrive. During the waiting process, one of the things that we are vulnerable to face is the absence or the diminishing of joy. I'll give you an example. A brother wants to get married or a lady wants to get married. God has told you you will get married. Is that true? And you pass all the joy and say on that glorious day when I wear my suit you will see the dance I've never danced before. I would dance David's dance and laugh. But between now and that point, you will see the lady looking frowny, angry at everybody. Why? Why is God delaying me? And so we kill our joy. Are you getting what I'm saying? And we wait and we pack up everything and we keep pushing the joy to the future. And we never get blessed with the moment. That expectation kills our joy. We cry day and night. Oh God, when will I become a millionaire? I'm seeing it. Let me just enter this thing. And you see joyless believers. Angry and offended at God. Note this tonight. That waiting should never postpone your joy. You can be joyful while waiting. Never wait until you arrive. 
Your joy gets complete when you arrive. But that joy should start and go with you all the way. Because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is the strength that you will need. There is a difference between joy and happiness. If I give you one million now, there is every reason to be happy. That's not joy. Hallelujah. But joy is of the Holy Ghost. It's the strength and the sense of rest and merriment that comes based on the conviction of God's integrity. So when there is no physical evidence, you are joyful. He said, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Look up, please. How many of us have killed our joy? There are so many people. You see a lady of 20 years looking like 50. Why? Say, I'm not in a relationship. God spoke to me. Am I the worst person in the world? No joy. You stand outside tomorrow morning and watch all the people that move. 90% of people are joyless people. They get up in the morning, there's no sense of joy and merriment. You ask them why. And they give you all kinds of legitimate reasons. And they believe that they are justified on the strength of those reasons not to be joyful. And they never arrive at their destinations. Is God speaking to someone tonight? That's what changed our parents. Many of them, when they got married like us, they were happy people. Eventually, their expectations. They expected that when the first child is five years, they would have been millionaires, established in their dream jobs, having their own homes. Unfortunately, they had wishes, but they did not understand the principles that will make it happen. So 15 years down the line, they are still crying for rent. There's nothing there. And you find your father old and angry. Now, don't insult him. It's the frustration, the pain and the bitterness that has been fast forwarded. Every new year, people are happy. Do you know why they are happy? Because it makes them forget about the previous year. And for the first one week, they dance. Many churches have all kinds of thanksgiving. By February, everybody is angry. Oh Lord, not again. Will this year pass without the child coming? Oh Lord, so this is how the husband will not come. This is how my admission will not come again. And then our joy. The devil keeps sucking out every ounce of joy. And by the middle of the year, everyone is already frustrated and cast out spiritually. You must sustain a revelation and a technology in the spirit to make sure that part of the things that suffer, of all the things that will suffer during this waiting period, your joy should not be one of them. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because your joy will culminate to your strength. God is speaking to someone tonight. Waiting in the kingdom is an acknowledgement of divine timing. When you wait in the kingdom, when you follow through that period, you are acknowledging that God works with times and seasons and that you submit yourself to the process of how God makes men great. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. Joy. Waiting is an acknowledgement of divine timing. Everybody say divine timing. Say after me, there is a season in my life and destiny when I will manifest. Say one more time, there is a season and a timing there is a season of showing forth there is a season of manifestation there is a season of display yes you must recognize that there is a season brothers and sisters is called due season everyone say due season due 
season. The second word I want us to consider tonight before I begin to build is the word impatience. Write it down. Impatience. What is impatience? Patience that has been exhausted. Patience that has been exhausted. Tonight I speak like prophet Elijah that that cruise of oil that is left will not run dry. There is a technology that will refill it tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, impatience is deadly and is dangerous to your destiny. Write it down and underline it. Impatience is deadly. I, I think that's one of the greatest keys in my opinion. One of the greatest keys that the devil has used to destroy Africans, Nigerians and young people in general. Impatience. impatience what does it mean to be impatient impatience means getting ahead of god getting ahead of god that's what it means to be impatient you run ahead of god you run ahead of his timing for your life impatience is a dangerous thing god is speaking to us tonight because many of us are where we are at this point of our lives because of impatience there are many of us that stress is almost killing us right now because of impatience hallelujah very very important you are a young lady you're just 21 you want to kill yourself if I don't marry by 2014, let it not be that I'm a Christian. And you are yoking yourself. You fasted for two weeks, which is supposed to be wonderful if it were for a just cause. But at 21, there's all kinds of pressure. And you can't wait. There's no, there's no patience. Impatience has driven many of us into all sorts of things. Everybody say, I receive grace to be patient. Abraham was a man in scripture who the tragedy of impatience caught up with him. Just write the scripture. We may not read it for time's sake. I want to hurry up and I want us to finish very fast. In Genesis chapter 16 from verse 1 to 4. Well, let's just, let's just look at it very quickly. Genesis 16, 1 to 4. That man, Abraham, God had spoken to him. Now it was taking too long. The result was not coming. And the Bible says in the 16th chapter, Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, bear him no children. So this was an issue of barrenness versus the promise of God that he would be the father of all nations. And she had a what? Please read. And she had what? And that handmaid was an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. I want to show you the danger of impatience. Every time impatience begins to grow in your life, you are about to wreck and jeopardize your destiny. Because very soon, there will be something around you that can be an option. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many people have missed out on God's best for them because they could not wait. Two days to enter God's best. We made all kinds of decisions in our lives. Now Sarai said to Abraham, Behold now, the Lord had restrained me. Are you seeing her interpretation? That God had restrained from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid, that it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham did what? Because Abraham had been eyeing the girl since. It's just that he didn't have the courage. How will he now tell his wife? 
Are you getting my point now? Impatience will create pictures around your life. If by August a godly brother does not come, God is my witness. I will go anywhere. Even if it's my village and carry anybody. The Bible says, Sarah told Abraham, I'm sure they have had quarrels and quarrels. And Sarah said, okay, this is a handmaid. She's younger than me. She can still be fruitful. Go ahead and sleep with her. And Abraham said, now you are talking. Abba, now you are talking. Let's, let's make this promise come to pass. Abraham did not argue. The young lady did not argue. Guess what? God too didn't say anything. The fact that you are doing things wrong and going ahead does not mean you are right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Did you see that the lady got pregnant? The fact that you compromise and it works does not mean it's God that made it work. There are many things that can happen in this life without God. Marriage can happen without God. You can make money without God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can get the job without God. Oh yes. You can get the admission without God. It's easy to compromise and get the blessing. But every time impatience leads you to take action, get ready because an Ishmael will be born. You are everything, everything is you, you are everything, everything is you. Look at verse 11, 11 and 12. Let's see the tragedy of this union, the product of the inability to wait for the word of the Lord, to wait for the seasons. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, listen, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord had heard thy affliction. Verse 12. And he will be what? Was that what she planned for? Abraham, was that the blessing you were told? He said, This union will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren that means this troubler will be everywhere till today the world has not recovered from the union less than one day of pleasure as a result of impatience jeopardize the generation who is about to jeopardize his destiny here there's, there are people here that are about to make decisions as a product of impatience. Is someone getting blessed tonight? The nation of Israel in Exodus chapter 32 when they came out of Egypt Moses went upon the mountain for 40 days. Look at me. It was a waiting period. Is that true? They didn't see any progress. Whereas Moses was on the mountain intercussing with God. So something was happening that they could not see it did not mean nothing was happening. Brothers and sisters, it looks like your life has been stagnant for years. You think you are stagnant, but if God should open your eyes to see the giants you have been conquering in the spirit. God is really ministering to someone tonight. It's not the way you have been looking at it. It's not the way you have been looking at it. Physically, you have not been in school for three years. But there is a progression. The Lord has been doing something. The job did not come. Five years after graduation, you are still struggling. And you believe you are like every other jobless person. Is that true? There is an investment of the Spirit in you. Only if you believe that waiting is not equal to delay in the kingdom. The nation of Israel could not wait. And what did they tell Aaron? Let's look at that verse. Exodus 32. Very quickly. Is someone getting blessed? Impatience can jeopardize your destiny. 
You can make mistakes that you may only be able to walk through, but never ever be able to cut out of your life. Hallelujah. And they told Aaron, they said, Moses is wasting our time. We don't even know whether he's dead or not. Please, we brought gold out of the temple. We remember that while we were slaves, we saw the Egyptians worshipping a god of gold. And it was the god that brought them out. Oh yeah, Aaron, come and build us this idol. Let's celebrate this idol. We can't wait. If there is God in heaven, why will he keep us in the wilderness for, for this long? 40 days. We didn't see Moses. He didn't tell us anything. And we are waiting. Let us build an idol. And while God was with Moses, advocating for the same people, they were destroying their own destiny by themselves. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings. They forced Aaron. They forced Aaron. Which are in the ears of your wives, and of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. Verse 3. And all the people took the golden earrings. They were so desperate to come out of that season. They say, is it not earring? Take. Oh yeah, all the women removed your earrings. Yes, we need to carve out very fast. Never find yourself trying to help God in a process that is exclusively within His power to pass you through and bring you to a place of greatness. Many of us try to help God. Uzzah tried to hold the ark. He died, yet the ark never fell. Let's look at just one verse there and then we'll continue. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it into a graving tool. After he made it into what? A molten calf. And they said, This be thy God, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land so after two years the child doesn't come after praying and praying oh we trust God and then somebody comes to say there's one man who it's not like I'm suggesting that you should go there me my heart it's me praise God the man can pray it's not like a herbal it's not exactly it's not a pastor it's not a herbal but he used to help people you say really two years ago when they told you say no 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 I'm a child of God Two years later, you are almost gassed out and you say, eh, let me talk with my husband about it. And you know men, when you are talking, it looks like they will say no. And then you are talking and you say, where is the man? You say, have you seen him? Who has he, who has he given uh, a child to? Say, let's be careful with all these people. Hallelujah. I counsel people and I am amazed at how much people fall when it looks like the word of God dwindles over their life just a little. Hallelujah. I'll never forget one lady who kept sending me text messages almost every day for one week. She said she believes that there are instructions I will give her for her marriage. I said, my dear, there's no instruction. I'm, I'm spending my life for hours shouting on Friday. Go and listen to Relationship and Family Life Series Part 1, 2, 3. The next day, she said she feels in her spirit that there is an instruction that will just open. You see, all these things is, is, is in innocence, but it's an act of impatience. Impatience will make you hear what God did not say. Impatience will create a road that was not of God. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Impatience will make you say yes to a guy that two weeks into the relationship you say, please, was I dreaming? Who did I say yes to? The guy will say, sweetheart, you say, me. I said yes to you. The guy say, you said yes now. What is all this again? And ladies, please be warned. I don't know why as I'm talking, I'm coming into all this relationship. Thing. Maybe God is speaking to some people through it. Hallelujah. Ladies, don't find yourself putting pressure on any lady and say answer him now you said it's none of your business if it's not you they ask advice when you are invited otherwise stay away and pray 
Many of us just come and say, this guy is my personal person. I know him. I said you will be in the relationship. And many people jeopardize their destinies. Is he born again? He's a nice person. Does he love the word of God? He's okay. He doesn't smoke. He used to smoke and drink before God. Abba, in the last one year, even him, he told me. He doesn't lie to me, honestly. If he you Abba me, he loves me too much to lie. Until the day he pounds your face when Abel resurrects and you find out that, that Cain, Cain, sorry, Cain is alive and active. And that guy beats the living daylight out of you. Or you enter his room and see another lady's clothes and the rest. And he says, so what? I'm a man. You said you're a Christian, you will not sleep with me. I can't, you are still my wife, but I have to find something to be doing before we get married. Impatience. Don't just laugh. I hope you are getting the message. It's a very serious message. Impatience brought the world under, under all kinds of terrible things. Someone getting blessed. Let's hurry up. During the waiting period, certain things usually happen. And I want you to take note of them. Number one is that you have the tendency to get weary. Especially when you have obeyed every principle you know. And there is no obvious change. Hallelujah. There are so many people that, that send me text messages and all of that. And they say, sir, I have been, I've been paying my tithe. God knows. I've been faithful. I've been paying my tithe. I've sown seeds. I've done everything. I'm, I'm a worker in my church. Maybe a member of the, 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 the decoration or whatever. I'm a member in this and that. Why is it not working? I've done everything. I've listened to every koinonia message. God is my witness. And I've been walking according to the principles of the kingdom. So weariness can set in. Especially when you are truly obeying the principles. There are many of us who have truly been tithing. You've truly been giving. You've been submitting your prayer request. Miracle service after miracle service. Nothing seems to have happened. But listen. Number two. Your joy begins to fade. When weariness sets in, your joy, like I said earlier on, begins to fade. Number three, impatience sets in. I'm giving, you to it, I'm giving it to you now systematically so that you understand that these are the things that characterize seasons of waiting. The tendencies, the vulnerabilities. Number four, which is the most dangerous part, is that you begin to consider options and alternatives other than that which God has given you. Options. Options. Usually those options are devilish. Usually those options may even look spiritual. But that's not the blueprint of God for your life. When Jesus met Peter, look at me. When Jesus met Peter, I told him, come, follow me. I will make you a fisher of men. Is that true? But when Jesus died, just for three days, three days, Peter did not see Jesus for three days. His patience could not pass 72 hours. And in John 21, he said, Oh boy, I go a fishing. And the disciples said, We go with you. In other words, let's go back to a, an option that we know something about. And when Jesus saw him, in chapter 15, thereabout, he said, Lovest thou me? more than this how many of us have given God options God told you you are going to be a great man of God but he said be patient you were not patient now you have started a fellowship that is almost killing you only you and your best friend who is tired he wants to leave it's just that he doesn't know what to do with you only two of you every evening only two of the person is tired because although you are genuinely called, but you cannot wait for timings and seasons. Hallelujah. 
I remember one, one pastor gentleman years ago, that guy is still struggling till today. And if he doesn't adjust, he may still be struggling till only God knows when. I remember his fellowship years ago appointed him and they said he was supposed to be chief usher. It was such an embarrassment to his personality. And he said God did not tell him in the blueprint of his ministerial call that he will be chief usher. If they cannot honor the grace of God upon his life and give him something honorable. By honorable, he means maybe president of the fellowship or something close to it. See that? Many of us have etched ourselves out of the preparations of the spirit. We'll come there. Because we have given ourselves options. Options. Hallelujah. God gave you signs. He gave you symbols. He gave you tokens that will signify to you when certain things are his will. You have not seen them. The equation has not lined up. If God tells you something, 80% is still not God. You must wait until it looks like God. It's amazing how impatience can make a thing look like it is God. Whereas it is not of God. And so somebody comes and says, Will you like to be a pastor in our church? And they say, Thank you, Jesus. I knew it. You people are underutilizing my anointing. Anytime God did not send you, be sure that you will not see his hand. See, let me tell you, this is one of the reasons why people move ahead of God and they keep struggling until the season comes where God catches up with them and they call it breakthrough. Then they make another mistake again and they wait. Why don't you walk with God? It's dangerous to walk ahead of God. Hallelujah. Impatience. Some of our parents have put our families in trouble because of impatience. I must build a house this year. I must build a house this year. Because my colleagues have built houses. Me too, I must build a house. I must buy three cars this year. One for me, one for my wife, and one for the children. And some of you are part of the sponsors of this impatience. Daddy, do it. You can make it. I believe in you. And now we put all our parents under all sorts of nonsense pressure. Because there is no impatience. There is no patience, sorry. Hallelujah. Some of us are here. If you want to wear tomorrow's clothes today, get set to walk naked tomorrow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I must buy a suit of 100,000. You carry everything God has blessed you with now, home and abroad. You bought one suit and you will die for the remaining part of your life. Whereas that money came to buy books. Is someone getting blessed? And then the trouble is the jet age and technology has made matters worse. Hallelujah. We have 15 year old millionaires. 20 year old millionaires. So everybody just says, I, I must make it in this Nigeria. If there is a cake, I must cut my share or stab whoever is standing close to my share until that piece of my cake comes to me. And you know, there are all kinds of confessions and prayers in the church that encourage this lust. Kill every enemy that is covering your cake, your portion of the cake. And you know, we do all kinds of things in the name of prophetic activities. Events sponsored by hell to push us into impatience. Say, I receive grace to be patient. There are many of us here. Sister, your life would not be in the mess that it is if only you were patient. You said, all my colleagues are in relationships. And one guy just came, one of the lonely ones among the friends. Say, okay, I'm doing too. And look, from that day till now, it's been four or five years of hell on earth. Because you attach yourself to Hagar and Ishmael is the product. Tonight, God is delivering someone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, I will wait. Everyone say it, I will wait. I receive grace to wait. There is a difference between delay and process in the spirit. If you allow the devil to destroy your life, 
Listen, let me tell you, I, I shared with you a few stories last week. I remember when a few years ago, I would be invited to go and minister. Then there was no protocol, no nothing. And I would prepare fast and pray, right? And go and minister. And at the end of it, the people would not even say, Oh, there is an honorarium one to appreciate you. And I mean, I will fast for days as if I'm preaching in an international conference somewhere. And then I'll go and sometimes it's when I arrive that they'll push people in front. Praise God. And say there is a place. And I remember, I will never forget, two pastors, they came and met me. They said, man of God, the kind of anointing you have, there are some bishops that do not even have you. Why are you underutilizing this anointing? Many of us will hear that thing and say it's true. It's true. I'll never forget through the rain, through the sun, through whatever. I will risk myself, pay my own transport and get there. I will never forget there was a gentleman from BLW. It was his suit I used to borrow when they invite me for ministration. I will borrow his suit in Suleiman and then Janfa had one nice loafers. His brother gave him. He will give me the loafers. The only thing I had was maybe socks or something. You are laughing. Don't be carried away by suits and all these things. Because many of... See, the trouble with men of God is they never open up the process that led them to that place. They make it look easy. As if it just happened by one prophetic word. And many of us are already running. You are already calculating your offering and your honorarium by Christmas. You better wake up. The journey is still far in Jesus' name. It's not that I'm not prophesying that. <laughs> I'm used to saying in Jesus' name, forgive me. Hallelujah. You must learn to wait. You must learn to wait. And I will show you why. We are going to wrap up when I reveal to you why this process is important in the kingdom. I will never forget one time when I got an honorarium of 10,000. I couldn't believe it. It was like I was dreaming. 10,000 for preaching something that is my passion that I will live and die for it. Brothers and sisters, a time came in my life when even me, I started talking to myself. I said, ah, but God, why are people doing this to me? People took me for granted. They would have list of ministers that they are bringing for programs. But they'll find out that the cost implication for holding those graces is so much. And then they'll run to this scapegoat called Joshua Selman. Sometimes two days to the conference. They will invite me and I'll go to prayer. I'll say, Lord, and the Lord will say, go. It looked like I was a fool. But one day came. Due season. Due season. You do not qualify to enter your future if you cannot wait. Who is God speaking to tonight? God gave you a small business under 100,000. You've not been effective yet. You're already dreaming in the name of Jesus in two months. I'll be riding a Jaguar. I'll be, you better stop dreaming and settle down and understand how things happen in the kingdom. Tame your lust and line it up with the seasons of the spirit. There is a difference between speed and foolishness. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many people step into seasons that is not God. That, let's, listen, if you force a door to open, whether it's God that opened it or not, it will open. But the trouble is, when they ask you who sent you, you will turn back and find out that you've been going alone. Hallelujah. So what do you do as you await your due season? This is the crux of this teaching tonight. What do you do when your due season is yet to appear? When that waiting period gets so long, Lord, will the child come? 
will the breakthrough come when will you change my story every time i go to pray you show me a great destiny you told me a day will come i will minister before thousands i will be an international evangelist you are giving me an international apostolic or prophetic ministry but as it is i have not yet seen it number one i'm giving you the formula brothers and sisters if you keep this secret you will survive the process between prophecy and manifestation you will find out that while men are falling by the wayside there will be a strength that will carry you number one during your waiting period you should do the following recognize that there is a divine timing and a due season it comforts you to know that your weight is not forever because god is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8 won't turn there tells us that there is a time for everything under the sun the bible says john remain in the wilderness until his what season of appearance everyone prophesy to yourself my season of appearance is coming prophesy it. my season of appearance is coming can you turn it into a prayer in one minute i may not look like it now but my god there is a making and my season of appearance will come i have a portion among the great and the hand of god will bring me there i will stay through i may not be able to preach now i may not have money in my pocket now but there is a due season it has been written by prophecy not the witches in my village can stop it no power in existence and I choose to wait. I choose to wait. There is a due season when I will drive the cars. There is a due season when men will run after me with jobs. There is a due season when so many men will come to ask my hand in marriage. There is a due season when my own family will dedicate their own building. Oh, yes. Time and chance happen to them all. My turn is coming. I know this for sure. A day will come. I will know what it feels like to be a kingdom millionaire. A day will come. That wedding ring will enter my hand too. But meanwhile I wait. A day will come. I will travel abroad. As though I'm walking from my house and going outside. I will enter the plane. A day will come. I will wear the convocation gown. A day will come. I will finally pass the job. There is a due season. The child will come. Barrenness does not last forever. Prophesy in one minute. Shake away unbelief. Shake away impatience. A day will come. I will have peace with my husband. I know it's a demonic challenge. There are ancestral powers causing this family problem. But there is a due season when the hand of God will visit my family. I know. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. I am persuaded. I may not see the wind. I may not see the cloud. It does not look like it will rain. But the hand of Jehovah, that hand that regulates times and seasons, my turn will come. I will be on television. My turn will come. The healing anointing will finally work. My time will come. When my profiting will appear, it's called my season of appearing. It's called my season of appearing.
Hallelujah. Recognize that everything under the sun works by timing. So when men are pushing you into seasons you are not ready for, listen. I cannot tell you, God gave me an instruction. And God told me, he said, that he would use koinonia messengers like angels and messengers of fire and send them across the nations and god specifically said we should never not in this season of ministry begin to sell tapes and do all of that i cannot tell you how many people have called to say man of god you are robbing your ministry of millions of naira i said i appreciate your interest but there is a season are you hearing what i'm saying so many people have spoken to me Come and open Koinonia branch in Abuja. Come and open in Lagos. Come and do this. Come and do that. I told you in 2006, after our crusade in Joss, it was so powerful. The PFN said that we should come and open a branch of the ministry. They were willing to give pastors so that we would train and have an auditorium. I went to God and God said you would die. That was exactly what I told them. That God said I would die. Listen. Many men of God today, do you know why ministry is killing them? Although God called them, they have opened other seasons for themselves. God never spoke to them to start a church. They started a church. Now they are wondering, no money, no nothing, no grace. There are many people, God told them, you are an evangelist. They said, I need a base so that I will have money. As though God cannot finance his work. Are you seeing how it has gotten a lot of people into trouble? Never do anything without asking God. Even if God said yes yesterday, ask him today again. Three days for us to start Koinonia, I went on a retreat. Three days I went on a retreat. And I said, Lord, it's not that I'm doubting you, but I want to confirm again. For adventure, it was my flesh that minister to me. Hallelujah. When you see what the hand of God is upon, even if you are a critic, you will know that there is God in what is happening. Hallelujah. What season in your life have you opened prematurely as a result of impatience? I know you are anointed MOG who asked you to start a healing ministry. You started gathering sick people and telling all of them, write what is wrong with you and lift it up. You want to become a great man. Everybody you laid hands on, nobody was healed. The people are angry. They are planning to beat you by the next healing service. You better go back to God and ask questions. Hallelujah. Many people have produced albums prematurely they produce five albums not even their immediate environment no they they traveled abroad took the albums it didn't sell because the season see i taught you last week that favor is one of the clearest signs that god is with you hallelujah recognize that there is a due season Sister, be delivered tonight. The husband will come. You are not the first to get married. Neither will you be the last. Brother, I know you are almost 30 years old. Relax. It's better to enter a profitable relationship at 30 than to enter nonsense that you sweat for three years before the arm of God will come to deliver you. Some of you see people in relationship and you admire them. Go and talk to them in truth and find out. Some of them, as they are going, they are just tired. They, it's just that they don't know what to do again with their lives. There is a child. They are already married. Say preparation. Many people want to drive cars. I must buy a car. I must buy a car. By force, the word of God is working. Nobody ever drove a car in my family. I must be the one and it must be this year. 
calm down. Look, trust me. We prophesy all the time and my, my greatest joy is to see everyone blessed spiritually, financially, socially, and so on and so forth. But then, God will judge me if I tell you that after prophecy, it will just happen to you the next day. It's not every aspect of your life that will happen like that. There are seasons. Everybody says seasons. There is seed. There is time. There is harvest. Let's hurry up. Number two. Every time you are about to get weary because the waiting period to your breakthrough is so long and it looks like will God ever come? Will I ever get to Canaan? After crossing the Red Sea, while you are rejoicing, thinking that's all, you find out that there is another mighty battle waiting for you. Listen. The second key is to meditate on the faithfulness of God. Meditate on the faithfulness of God so far. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. It's amazing how we easily forget the things that God has done in our lives. And we focus on the things that he has not done. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, this house is too small. We are tired. We need a change. Remember when you were managing with one room. And that one room, it was your friend that gave you. Although God has told you you are going to a new house. But in the interim, when impatience wants to set in. When weariness wants to set in, count the faithfulness of God. Where is the God that gave me a lion? Where is the God that gave me the bear? Oh God, I'm, I'm not eating hamburgers and all of this now, but Lord, I'm no more soaking Gary. At least I can eat once in a day that I paid by myself. In the dream, I saw four points. When the result came out, I saw 3.1. But Lord, I give you praise because it used to be 1.7 and you have helped me. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God so far. It's easy for Satan to trivialize God's faithfulness in your life. Once in a while I have the opportunity to go to hospitals to see people. And, and then I, I pray for people once in a while. And I am humbled at the confidence of people in the midst of humanly speaking unchangeable situations hallelujah i have spoken to so many hiv patients in my life and you look at some of them and you humanly speaking you can say it's over you are counting days but you see the joy i remember speaking with one of the women very recently and this woman was rejoicing she said i now have a ministry and it was, she did not even come for the counseling for healing. She had so conquered it that for her to live is Christ and to die is gain. She was focusing on something else. Yet there is somebody shouting and arguing. If the husband does not come in two months, Lord, if I backslide, let it be that it's your fault. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people who have been diagnosed. Oh, you need to go to the hospital, brothers and sisters and see people whose legs they've cut, they amputated the legs and then you keep seeing them singing His faithfulness is forevermore a pretty lady who is not married already but she had an accident and one eye is gone are you getting my point? and she says yes Lord I thank you I'm alive if I can do nothing I can give God praise whereas a house close to that same street where the accident occurred there is a complainer and a murmurer shouting at God we are tired of eating spaghetti in this house my father only pays school fees shame on him at his age he cannot even give me 5,000 my father is giving me 1,000 you wait and see the one 
that it was with box and prophecy they sent them from the village to come to Zaria. One heavy echo like and prophecy, may God be with you. And it came and stopped at North Gate, not having one naira, yet they are in 300 level. When you see people worshiping Koinonia, everyone knows the story. We can wear suits and fake it, but everyone knows where the shoe is hurting. So don't let anybody stop your praise when it's time to worship God. They gave birth to them in a nice maternity ward. They gave birth to you on the road. The faithfulness of God. You would have died within 24 hours. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God. Who is God speaking to tonight? You cried for years. Let the husband come. Now the husband has come. You are saying, Lord, I need a boy. I need a boy. I'm tired of three girls. On the other side, a woman is saying, Lord, anything, anything, boy or girl, whatever, I am grateful. Just one. I don't need two. I just need a consolation. That I am a woman. What to do? This is one big secret of my life. You never find me frowning and wondering what will my tomorrow be me? God has done too much in my life. I can begin to count on the faithfulness of God till my time of manifestation comes and it will not finish. Hallelujah. That's why by the grace of God, there is no reason for me to envy any man till I die. People challenge me, I am happy. But God has done too much in my life. I will be the most ungrateful person in my life if I ever try to trivialize what God has done. Sister, you are always complaining, but you forgot you are beautiful. There was there about beauty. Oh, may God change it for one day and you will know what is there about beauty. Are you kidding? Beauty took a woman from her village to become the king's wife. You never say, Lord, thank you. Every day somebody says, I'm fine. To an extent, when they say you're fine, say, please don't mock me. Hold on. Come, see, let me tell you something. Ungratefulness is a terrible disease. It's sin before God. Refusing to acknowledge the things that he has done. Shine on me. See your grace. Your grace. I'm nothing without you. It's grace. Your grace. Shine on me. Hallelujah. You are there complaining. Oh God, so I'm going to graduate with a pass. You wouldn't have given me the admission. Really? Really? You wait and find out students that were withdrawn in their second year or third year because they could not get a C, not an E, a C because of the nature of their program. Hallelujah. And they left school and went, and went to learn handwork and they are still grateful to God. Hallelujah. Can we take two minutes to count our blessings? Go ahead and do it. Just in two minutes and we'll continue. Think of when you were nothing, brothers and sisters. Oh, I know what God has done in my life. No amount of honor will fool me. No amount of grace. Some of us were called this. God saved us. Some of us, when God saved you, you could not even speak English. You know it. Your family is still living in a hut right now. But God has exalted you. Tell him thank you. Your grace, your grace, we're nothing without you. Those of us who have been in this ministry for a while, remember when we used to sit on the floor 
Remember when we used to sit on the floor? Who is God speaking to tonight? You are a graduate and you are still complaining. How many graduates does Nigeria produce in a year? I heard about a lady who had a ghastly motor accident today and died. How many of us have escaped accident? Arm robbers came to your house. They came to your neighbor's house. They came to your shop. Terrorists blew bombs in different places. Some of you saw it. You saw them. They pointed guns at you. But there was a hand of destiny that delivered you. When have you become ungrateful? Go ahead and pray. And say, Lord, although I have not seen what you will do yet, I have not seen the manifestation, but I thank you. I thank you. The God who did it for me before will do it again. The God who gave me a husband will give me a child. The God who gave me parents. The God who gave me admission will pay my school fees for next session. God who sustained my father without a job for 10 years. That God is able. God who sustained my mother without salary. She trained me to school. Where is that God? Where is the God that delivered you? When the doctors concluded about you, when that breast lump grew up, when, 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 that, when your, hair was, your hair was falling, where is that God that helped you? Some of our parents were stuck and God gave them better jobs. Have you forgotten the faithfulness of this God? Your grace, your grace, I'm nothing without you. Grace, your grace shines on me. Hallelujah. There are seven secrets the Lord gave me. And the Lord told me if I keep these secrets, nothing will stop me from becoming what he has destined for me one day maybe i will share them but one of it is this that i've shared with you tonight if you know how to take advantage of your testimonies you will never never become a victim of impatience let's hurry up number three what to do while you wait for your due season employ the weapon of praise Hiya. many people do not know that praise is a weapon employ when when you count your blessings then you balance it up with praise and see the devil that will stand to speak discouragement to you habakkuk chapter 3 let's hurry up habakkuk chapter 3 let's read from verse 17 and let's see what the prophet had to say. Habakkuk chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, this is what makes some people mighty. And they walk upon the earth as if Satan does not exist. There are revelations that empower men. Although, everyone look up, the fig tree shall not blossom. But at least there is a fig tree. Is that true? Neither shall fruit be in the vines, but at least there is a vine. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Verse 18. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. Somebody say, yet I will rejoice. The Wayek result did not come out well. Yet I will rejoice. I 
will joy in the God of what? The God that will bring that salvation. I will rejoice. Although nothing may seem to work. Some of you as you go back right now to your homes. The truth is that there is nothing to eat this night. Yet, I will rejoice. I remember times in my life. I've told you when I would buy bread. And cut the bread. And put granite. Huh? And close it. And give thanks to the God of Israel. Because I knew that what was in me was greater than the restaurant. Greater than whatever. Can you sing the song he's playing now, Sam? What does the song say? Let's even understand the meaning of the song. So that we know we are singing. Igbo people, what does he say? Email. That's what I'm saying. What's the meaning? Thank you. Huh? Thank you. For what? Thank you, Daddy. You've done well. God bless you. Email. Just watch your God in one minute. Email. Oh, Kaka. Oh, God of your salvation, thank you. Very quickly, Psalms 138, verse 1. Powerful scripture. I'm giving you the arsenals to go back and bulldoze the gates of hell and let the devil know that although you were almost gassing out, you came for koinonia tonight and that the oil will never run dry. He said, I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods, all the gods that want me to be weary. He said, I will praise you before the gods. I will sing praises. That means I will look at all of these options and I will dance before God and say, it's better for me to remain barren than to go to a herbalist to get a child. The weapon of praise. The weapon of praise. Let me hurry up because I want us to take at least five or ten minutes. Two more points and we'll round up. We have to praise God this night. Number four. What do you do while you wait for your due season? Number four. Look up. Begin to act like the future you see coming. While you wait, if you truly believe that you are going to enter that future, begin to act. If you think you are going to get into the palace, then start learning the language of royalty. It's the sign of faith that you are preparing. You believe you are getting married. Start behaving like a married woman, not a small girl. Change. Switch. Have the mindset. Develop the ideologies that conform to the new level you are entering. Start acting like the person you believe you are going to be. Develop the mindset. You believe you are going to be a multi-billionaire CEO. Start behaving like that. Don't behave like an arm robber. Don't read any nonsense you see on the internet. Compose yourself. Start carrying the traits of leaders. You believe you are going to be an exceptional leader. Start training yourself. Don't speak anyhow. Great men don't speak anyhow. Start learning the protocol of greatness. There is a protocol that leads you into the realm of greatness. You believe you are going to be standing before presidents. Start behaving well. With your plate of gari, use fork and knife and lead. No problem. 
make your mistakes. You are doing it in the secret place. A day will come you will do the real one. For sure. Begin to act like your future. When Joseph, Joseph knew, he had seen it in the spirit, seen it in the dream, that a day will come he will stand. The sun representing his father, the moon representing his mother, and 11 stars will bow to him. But then, his life was opposite what his destiny was saying. They threw him in the well, and he composed himself. He said, I'm a leader. I will learn the language of royalty. Listen, when they sold him for the equivalent of about $13 or so, that's the equivalent today, $13, you sell a human being. Were they so broke that they sold their brother to go away? But Joseph said, no problem. There's one song we used to sing before. You can take my coat. You cannot touch my destiny. We used to sing and jump with it during missions. Then in FCS, that you can take my coat. You cannot touch my destiny. Should I teach you? One minute. One, two, three. You can take my coat. You cannot touch my destiny. They can take your coat. They can lie against you. They can scandalize you. That's taking your coat. But it will not touch your destiny. They can say you will never make it. No problem. That's taking your coat. It doesn't just mean till a woman comes to lie that you rape her. Whatever men do to impede your progress, they are taking your coat. But they can take your coat. It cannot touch your destiny. See, this must be your contemplations in the secret place. The cost of your future is preparation. The cost, the price, the cost for your future is your preparation. While you prepare for your due season, keep getting qualified for that future. You will never enter a future that you are not qualified for. I shared this last week. God will never bring you into a future you are not prepared for. So he will hold back that time so that your preparation will coincide with the comings of times and seasons. The period of waiting is the process that qualifies you for your future. Write it down. The period of waiting is the process. The trainings that you receive during that period of waiting is what qualifies you for the future. So your waiting period is a period of preparation. Everybody say my waiting period is my period of preparation. Say one more time. If God gave you the 5 million naira last year, he would have killed you. So God says, hold on. Just keep being faithful with the 100,000. Oh God, but my colleagues have 1 million. Say, nope, none of your problem. Just wait. And then you keep building yourself. God, I want the level of anointing that will move mountains and do all of that. God will say, just, just keep moving your chair in the place of prayer. Your chair is small enough for you to move. When you can move that chair, you will move something else till you move mountains. David did not become a king in one day. There was a progression. Although he was anointed for the palace, there were seasons. Be faithful at your current level. When Joseph went to Potiphar's house, he was so exceptional. He didn't have to wait until he got to Pharaoh. He was faithful, excellent. So much so that Potiphar made him the head of everything. He walked like royalty. He thought what to make the wife of Potiphar to be attracted. You know, slaves had a way that they dressed. Their beds were long. They didn't have time to shave and look nice. 
But Potiphar's wife looked at Joseph and she, she was strict. She said, come, I prefer this guy to my husband because he walks like royalty. Other slaves were moving this over. Wherever we die, Joseph said, I'm not dying in Egypt. I know that I've come to the place of royalty. Square up your shoulder and know that it only one of the most comforting scriptures for me in scripture in the Bible is, and it came to pass. Everybody say, and it came to pass. Powerful scripture. It never comes to stay. And it came to pass. You hear the Bible say it again. On the fifth day of this month and that and that and the word of the Lord came to pass. Hallelujah. How many of you are behaving like your future already? Don't raise your hand. Some of you are still behaving like your past. Because in the future, you will be too great to keep bitterness. But you are still keeping bitterness right from secondary school. Now you've met with the lady in university and you say, even till we die, you are still holding on to your past. You are prolonging your arrival because you are not preparing yourself to be qualified. Hallelujah. Your preparation is your report card that qualifies you for the future. Your preparation is your report card. You are diligent at this level. Number five. Oh, that's a beautiful song. We've not sang this song in a while. You think I'll sing it? Let's continue. I'm trying to rush. Number five. What to do while you are waiting for your due season? Look for problems to solve. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. We discussed that last year. No man ever enters greatness. You find favor with God through the fear of the Lord, through faith and through tithing. You find favor with men by solving problems. Joseph knew that he had the ability to solve problems. And he rejoiced. When he was in the prison, Potiphar's wife lied that he raped her. Said, no problem. The truth will come out. Because you can see, look at me. You become too cheap when you spend your time explaining yourself to critics. Are you getting me? You become too cheap. You make yourself too cheap. There are many of us who learn this now. Learn this now. It is easier to become great than to remain great. Look at me. Come, my sister. Let this girl buy a jeep now. That by next week, Koinonia, she comes with what jeep now? Car people. Huh? Ah, that, that has expired now. Who is thinking of all these ones? Praise God. Jaguar. No, let me say something realistic. CRV. Right? Honda CRV. 2014. Limited edition. And she comes with it. Do you know at once, all of a sudden, you will find fault with her hair? You will find fault with what she's wearing. Is it this place they put watch or here? You know why? Listen. People's progress often it has a way of choking and revealing our current weakness. It is a natural thing. You must learn how to celebrate greatness when you see it. That's the antidote to jealousy and having the heart of a critic. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even if this lady came from one village somewhere and all of a sudden she marries a millionaire and God just changes her life. There are people who say, is this how to smile? She's not even behaving like a rich man's wife. Hold on. The truth is, it's not about her smile. Because if another millionaire comes to marry you too, you stop. You have now become colleagues in greatness. So no more criticism. Are you seeing that? I'm teaching you a principle. Every time people criticize you, understand their predicament. Don't be angry. Your success is doing something to them. 
listen. Hold on. You were still doing the same thing before you got great. Why was it not an issue? That is today now, all of a sudden, eh, Shedrach wants to show us he's wearing shoe of 20,000. Who doesn't have it? If not because of my father, will, will I not be wearing it? No problem. Listen. Deliver yourself from the spirit of criticism by celebrating greatness when you see it. Oh, Shadrach, this is beautiful. You are looking smart. Wow, wonderful. You are coming. God bless you. You hardly criticize those you truly celebrate. Are you getting my point? Please, learn this. Every time you see God doing a good thing in someone's life, many of our parents are like that. You just saw one doctor or one professor in ABU. He just changed the fifth car. Uh, if dropping the money of the institution is all that get out of that attitude of cynicism and learn to celebrate because you are sowing seeds that will speak for you yes. hallelujah don't spend your time trying to respond to critics you say hey, you have started palming your hair you want all the colonial guys to see you no problem just continue doing what you are doing and truly they will see you and marry and leave the person criticizing you. Problems are gates, right? Problems are not walls. They are gates. Problems are doors. Begin to view problems as gates. It exits you from one season and brings you into another. The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. All the bruises inflicted by is your past now. Hallelujah. You never learned this song for how many years? Those of us who are new are lost. The old people didn't used to sing, they'll just keep chewing their mouth. The moment you say, Heal all the wounds inflicted by this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Problems are opportunities for significance. When God wants to announce you, He seduces problems for you to solve. Until you solve a problem, you are not known by anybody. You remain insignificant. Until there was Goliath, David was not known. Until the king had a dream, Joseph was not needed. Problems are opportunities for your significance. Problem solving guarantees your success. Please write. I'm showing you the things to do that will bring you into your due season. Problem solving guarantees your success. Write this down. Problem solving creates your distinction from others. Everybody will look at you the same way they are looking at everybody until an ability to solve problem distinguishes you. Sovereign problem solving sets you apart. It distinguishes you. It makes your difference to be seen. Problem solving makes you known. You will remain in the wilderness until the problem you solve announces you. When you do this, you can rejoice knowing that a due season is coming. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. Brothers and sisters, as I look at us here, I see people who are bigger than Nigeria. I see people who are bigger than, than West Africa. There is an anointing within you. Some of you are sitting down here. Nobody, look, let me tell you. I have learned from experience. 
that there are all kinds of gifted people scattered in this house. You may just sit down and watch people. I remember when I was marking the exams of the, the, the first set of the, the students, the school of ministry. My goodness. Those guys were trained under quite some harsh condition. They had like six months of strike and all of that. For a four-month program, they spent close to a year. When I was marking their exams, I was even afraid. I said, these guys may not do well. I was shocked. I tell you, some people wrote that exam as if it's magnet. And it's a kind of exam that you can even carry your, your, your notes and write it and you will still form it. And I learned once again. Brothers and sisters, the person sitting close to your side may be a genius that is bigger than this realm. It's only a matter of time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Forget about the board, what the board has told you. 1.1, 2.2, 3.3, hold on. You are bigger than that. But will you wait for your season of appearing? Or will you get so intimidated? There are many people who sit down and say, I'm bigger than this level. So I will move myself. That's the greatest danger. There are some of you that are doing jobs of 20,000. But the truth is that even if they pay you 1 million naira, they have insulted you based on what you have. Continue doing the 20,000 naira job. Qualify yourself for the greater seasons that are coming. Hallelujah. There are some of you when you sit in class with your colleagues. Academically speaking, you may not be the best student. But there is so much in you. Don't worry. Don't try to announce yourself. Relax. A day will come, God will speak and say, This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. This is my beloved kingdom millionaire. This is my beloved apostle. This is my beloved prophet. This is my beloved pastor. And he will command the world to hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very, very important. We are going to do two things very quickly. In the next five minutes, please, I want everybody to participate in this. We are going to enter such a realm of prophetic worship. We are just going to thank God for the season that he has even brought us. Thank him for the things Please worship him, prepare yourselves. Thank him for the things that he has done. And thank him for what he's going to do. I don't know how you are going to worship God and praise God tonight. And then after that, we will pray and prophesy and receive grace from God. This message you are hearing, you will play it again and again in the future when you sit on the throne of greatness and you will cry. Because you will thank God. Rise up on your feet, everyone.
I'd like you to start this prayer session with a dangerous prophecy about your destiny. I don't know what the devil has spoken to you. I don't know what options you are about to take. But right now, lift your voice and begin to speak. And say, I'm not giving up. My God is alive. Go ahead. Pray. No way. No giving up. The prophet is still above my head. There's no giving up. I may fail, but I will rise again. There's no giving up. The hand of God is upon me. I'm an object of praise. Oh, protect it. There's no turning back. There's no turning back. My destiny is before me. There is a generation waiting for me. There's no turning back. I may cry, but there's no turning back. I may weep, but there's no turning back. There is an anointing upon me. There is a prophecy upon my life. Lord, he slay me. Yet will I praise him. All the days of my appointed time. I will wait. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. There is hope for a dream. Even though it is cut off at the scent of water. Will fall again. Prophesy. There's hope for my family. There's hope for my marriage. There's hope for my academics. To him that is joined with the living, there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. Go protect it. Cause the spirit of discouragement. Cause the spirit of impatience. Cause the spirit of discouragement. That business can arise again. That marriage can arise again. Your CGPA can arise again. Although you are in final year, it's not too late. Samson, your eyes may be plucked out, your hair may be cut off, but there is a new season. David, remain in the wilderness. The day of your announcing is coming. Come on, pray. Pray, Koinonia. Make investment for your destiny. I refuse to give up. I refuse to give up. No compromise. Hallelujah. Two prayer points and we'll round up. The next prayer point is that you're going to cry for grace. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, if because of the fierceness of the season of waiting, you now say I will marry any man. I will take any job. Okay, I will go to the harbor list. I will ask God for forgiveness later on. I will sleep with the boss. Let me just get the work. I'd like you to shout no way. Shout it no way. Listen, the three Hebrew boys said, Oh king, we are not careful to speak to you in this matter. Our God, whom we serve, will deliver us. But even if he does not deliver us, we are going to pray. I'd like you to say, Oh God, tonight, give me the finisher's anointing. Give me the finisher's anointing. One more time, I will push. Come on, open your mouth and pray. The finisher's anointing. 
the anointing. The finisher's anointing. Koinonia, pray. You are almost there. Don't give up. When your season is about unfailing, don't give up. You paid the price for 10 years, for 5 years. You paid the price. You paid the price. Lord, give me the finisher's anointing. Like Samson. Hey, we finish. I receive the finish of the Lord. They may be beside me, but I won't give up. Oh, God, 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 I'm a part of faith. I receive the finish of the Lord. They may call me more than the leader, but I will keep walking in holiness. I will wait. I will wait. I will wait. Till my turn comes. Time and time happens to them. Wait. Wait. They that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. They shall renew their strength. They shall come up with wings. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh my soul, wait thou upon the Lord. Oh my soul, wait thou upon the God of your salvation. Though thy beginning be small, but your latter end shall be great. Though thy beginning be small, Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord, when they are strength, when they are almost casting out, suddenly, when the devil is celebrating the finishing of the oil, a prophetic word brings it back again. Hallelujah. Are we together? Believe in the Lord. Many believers don't believe God. Many believers. It has to be in this order. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe what about him? Believe that he is God. You can believe he's a deity. That's not the information required for your greatness. You can believe that he's not a man. Satan too is not a man. Many other spirits too are not men. So there's nothing special about believing that he's not a man. You must believe that he's the mighty God. And you must believe in his ability. I, I don't know how to make you see this. Look, let me tell you, when you focus on God and who he is and his might, you will turn back and see the possibility of your situation shrinking before him. And then you will be brought to a point where you will agree, Lord, you can change my life, I believe. Lord, you can wipe my tears. There are many faithless people just because they are holding their Bibles and speaking what is written there. They think they believe. No! It's a conviction. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I believe you. That's why he left us the word of God, to help us believe him. The word of God is a commitment from God to you. It's, it's, it's a manifesto. It's to give you room to vet him. That means if you have any fears as to why you should not believe him, he still leaves the word. Are we together? Believe in the Lord your God. By doing so, you shall be established. So he says, be convinced and convicted about who God is and what he is able to do. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 2 says, but I know whom I have believed. He says, I am persuaded that he is able. 
I am persuaded that he is able. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says, For without faith it is impossible to please God. Listen, it says, For he that cometh to God, like you have come now, it says you must come believing that he exists and then that he is a rewarder. Let me see how many of you came from far. If you came from far, let me see your hands. How many of you honestly had quite a stressful journey coming? Now, do you think, please drop your hands, thank you. Do you think that God will watch you live wherever? You heard the, someone came from Ghana, someone came from Maiduguri. So within and outside this nation, people coming, there are many people connecting from around the world. Do you believe if you were God, will you sit on your throne and watch someone almost have an accident and for 12 hours come and sit down some of you have been here probably since 12 in the afternoon or two or three and then as god you sit down and then say okay share the grace may god bless you i don't know the god you gave your life to but the one i gave my life to is a serious god it's a very serious god we are used to people playing games with our lives God is not just a trustworthy God. He is too serious that he gave his son to die and then he will play games with your life. No, sir. He's a rewarder. He's a rewarder. Let me tell you something. You've heard me say it. If you ever find yourself coming here to Koinonia, that you arrive here safely alone is a sign that half of your challenges have gone. Um, now, uh, you would think I'm saying it just because I'm the man of God here. You decide to come here and see the attacks that will arise. Money that you are saving will disappear. All of a sudden, oh, every to, some of you, the morning to come, you are not even yet sure whether you will come. It's a spirit. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe in the Lord your God. Sister, believe in the Lord your God. My brother, believe in the Lord your God. Concerning your admission, believe in the Lord your God. Concerning the baby, I know it's five years, but believe in the Lord your God. Believe. Concerning God, turning your life around. You need more than a job. You need breakthrough. You need favor. If you get a job of 50,000, you are still backward because you should have been working for the past 10 years so now the issue is not just a job of 50 or 100 thousand that god can you shift my what would have been the backlog of the past shift my 10 years to enter my september and wait for me there that i can enter september and I, I, it will look as if september is 10 years put together One of the greatest ways breakthrough comes is the manipulation of time. Read your Bible and see what God did with time when it was time to visit people. He made the sun to stand still. He made the sun to go backward. Are we together? He did something to time. When you lose time, you have lost everything. Believe in the Lord your God. Number two. Please, let's go back to um, Second Chronicles. He said, believe in his prophets. Listen carefully. His prophets here doesn't just mean someone that prophesies. His prophets here doesn't even mean someone who is not fake. That means someone who is real. That's not what he's talking about. He said, believe his prophets. So shall ye prosper. To prosper means to do well. He says, believe his prophets. His prophets are not just people who prophesy. His prophets are not just real men of God. <clears throat> Listen carefully. This is where we miss it. You must learn this. His prophets here are not just men who are doing the biddings of God. It has nothing to do with maybe someone being real. His prophets here means the person sent to you listen listen the bible um come sam 
Come, darling. Look at this. I'm Elijah. And I'm going to the house of a widow of Zarephath. Are we together? Don't you think on my way going, I'm going to meet other people who have problems? So I meet a gentleman who has a problem and I just greet him. How are you? Where is the house of the widow of Zarephath? He's shaking me but doesn't receive anything because I'm not sent to him. I'm a prophet. I probably met other widows. Elijah probably met other widows lamenting and he said, Oh dear, you mean it? You mean this how your life is? Sorry, eh? And he kept going. The same way Jesus saw 10 lepers. The same way Jesus would see people and touch one and stand up and go. There is a man sent to you. There is an anointing sent to you. Listen, I know that many people would not like me for what I'm telling you. Not every anointing can bless you. Generally speaking, by opening your heart, I mean at the anointing a portion to change your destiny. It's true. Hear what I'm telling you and then God will bless you. There is an anointing, a portion. There is a grace designated. Let me tell you, happy are you the day you come into the environment where the anointing that was sent for you. Do you know, let me tell you this, and I tell you this honestly, my heart is passionate when it has to do with blessing people. But I have met people in my life that I just prayed for them just for praying sake. But I knew in my spirit, I wasn't sent to them. Of course, you wouldn't tell them so they don't feel bad. But you know. But I've seen others. I could even wait for them to share their challenges because I know. I know. The anointing sent to you. So believe his prophets. Are we together? There were many widows in Zarephath. Elijah was looking for just one. Have a prophet. What of other women? <clears throat> I love them. I can pray. I can intercede. May God bless you. Do A, B, and C. But I'm looking for a woman of Zarephath. Where is she? Finally, you find her. And his clear she's not even ready for you. She's doing something else. The prophet would have been angry to say, I spend time to come here. You don't even know what you are missing. I'm on my way going. But because he was sent, he had to stay. His assignment was to change her life. When you find the anointing and the prophet that God has sent over your life and your situation, let me tell you, you will watch that anointing rubbish your situation in the, as if Satan does not exist. It's, it's not just this is where we have a little challenge with many believers who just say the most important thing is God yes you are right but you are wrong the most anointing is anointing what is there what is so special about this man of God this is what I'm teaching you now people are sent to people even the word of God is sent he sent his word like a messenger meaning until that word is sent you can stay there but when the word comes, like a messenger, angel Gabriel left other believers around earth and was directed to one person, Daniel. All that fight for 21 days in the heavenlies. He would have been angry to say, I'm going to someone else. Mm -mm. He said, Daniel, I am come to give you understanding. Are you the only one? I am come to give you understanding. Jesus is appearing by the road. Saul is on his way to Damascus. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says there were other people with Saul. God would have been fair enough to at least give them something. And then he isolates one person and discusses with the person. The rest just fall down and don't even know what threw them down. They just got up to clean themselves and say, Kai, now what is all this one now? Whereas one person has that encounter. Sent, sent, sent the word that changes my life. Sent. I have had encounters with sent words and sent prophets, and my God, did my life change? Tonight, let me tell you if you can believe, 
this he said believe his prophets i know you are a businessman i know you are educated i know you are smart but there are many equations in this life that cannot be solved with pen and paper they are solved from the realm of the spirit it's only the result you receive here are we together now believe in his prophets so shall you prosper write this down please his prophet here is the vessel sent from him to you you must first acknowledge that this vessel is sent from god to you and one of the ways that you can help yourself to believe the prophet god has sent to you is investigate the dealings of god with that man don't just believe for nothing you have a right to investigate the dealings of God with that man. What is so special about this man? Why should I believe him? Why should I take the word that he's bringing seriously? Every true prophet of God has a track record of his dealings with God. Investigate the dealings of God. Study the track records of his results. I think it's unfair if you just yoke people to believe you just like that no give them room to study the track records of your result and find out whether the results are worth your believing how do you believe his prophets open up your spirit to receive both his grace and his instructions don't just receive the grace alone instructions many times believers miss it because we miss instructions very subtle instructions sometimes very ego stinging instructions like you were seated here now and then i just said everybody shout jesus you know i don't mean to embarrass your intelligence you don't sit on a seat and shout jesus you've been singing a song before you came here you there was jesus more than 10 times in that song you kept shouting jesus jesus lover of my soul and nothing happened and here you are sitting and a man is saying just shout jesus once if you don't have this revelation you can sit down and say please what is we are not children here what is all this nonsense he told naman go to jordan wash seven times naman said me jordan there are clean rivers somewhere and a small girl said you are the one in trouble if you don't go and wash you can go back with your lepros two scriptures and then we'll pray exodus chapter 14 and verse 31 and israel saw the great work which the lord did upon the egyptians it says and the people feared the lord and believed the lord and also what his servant moses god performs mighty things and creates that track record not just so that he alone will be believed god also wants the vessel he's using to be believed the bible says they feared the lord they believed the lord and they believed his servant they believed the lord and they believed his servant you believe the lord you don't believe his servant you may not get any miracle exodus chapter 19 and verse 9 exodus chapter 19 and verse 9 and the lord said unto moses look up please lo i come unto thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when i speak with thee and believe thee forever that means i can talk to you without the cloud but i keep that cloud as that evidence so that the people can trust that it is me you are talking to i'm i'm going that far because i don't just want the people to believe me alone i want them to believe you too because they are receiving is dependent on their both they are believing me god and they are believing you 
a servant he says and the lord said i come in a thick cloud so sometimes when god does some of these signs and wonders is is not really just for him alone when god does some of these things oh there's a lady here and someone is shouting another you know what god is doing he's using those things it's, it's a similitude of the cloud to help you see him. you can call somebody and say who is grace or who is um victory and you can say this is just guessing i'm sure it's just guessing but how do you guess that someone in this direction do you guess that one god does some of these things sometimes purposely to just address the the leftover of unbelief because you see some of us are coming from different christian experiences some of us have been our minds have been messed up by all kinds of theology all kinds of philosophies some of us have had bad experiences with all kinds of men of god prophets and whatever and chances are that when you come like this usually you will just add the man of god to the list of all the people and hope that he's just a better version of them and god says not so and he uses these signs to speak to you that you are in mount zion are we together it's amazing how a little miracle can just readjust your own belief immediately readjust your own belief while the devil is trying to lie to you can your life be changed all of a sudden the the power will touch the person near you this somebody you shook hands with turn to your neighbor and say this and that so you know that the person uh, the person can be acting It's a very difficult thing for believers to believe God but I think it's even harder to believe a man of God and people have all kinds of justifications as to why they shouldn't believe men of God but regardless of what your justifications are if you believe God and don't believe the vessel you will be established but you will not prosper are we together your prosperity is what gives evidence to your establishment you must believe one word from God can turn your life around one prophetic word can turn your life around all these strange spirits that oppress people they don't just go because they are told to go no it takes the anointing I was talking with one of the protocol uh, people when we were coming down here and I told him I was shaking my head and then I was talking to him and I said I am amazed driving down to come for the miracle service now i said i am amazed at how people in africa and nigeria trivialize success i am shocked at how people um believe that success is about luck it's amazing how people can see a huge sacrifice and trivialize it and just make it look like i think these people are just fortunate is that true I, I, this were my contemplations while i was coming listen there's no result that happens in this kingdom by mistake now including the testimony you are about to have that gentleman from ghana he did not just press this thing and found my name no 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 the anointing that is sent with that word works day or night are we together now there are many testimonies just like his that gentleman you see that now someone will tell you i was sitting and i had a dream how about those who buy new phones brand new phones brand new phones and then they open it and see koinonia messages inside how do you explain that a new phone not new uh, what they call that thing not new memory card i'm not talking about new memory card a new phone that you bought it tear rubber you are the one who opened it then the first thing you see inside is a message that answers your question who, who now who, how do you explain that listen listen we live in a world that is not natural it only manifests the spiritual naturally the, the 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 earlier you got this the better my brothers and my sisters hear me all that you see in this world is only a reflection say reflection the real control room in this our world 
is the realm of the spirit whoever can ascend this three-dimensional realm has the advantage of victory nothing happens that is physical are we together one of the reasons why many of us are seated here tonight among the many miracles we desire is finance oh nigerians finance you want to talk a good news to any honest nigerian right now in this day and age as we transit into the ember month no matter speak about their spiritual life yes speak about their love for god passion new depths but please don't ignore that other one just even if it's in passing just say something about it finance many people want to see financial breakthrough many people are working and they are trusting god for breakthrough and remember the strange thing about finance do you know why listen i'm not talking about money we're going to pray shortly do you know why many believers are poor because in the kingdom finance is warfare money is not just an instrument to live well it's a weapon see listen oh dear what's it ecclesiastes 7 let me just talk a little you was uh I, I didn't plan to say this but ecclesiastes 7 verse 12 let me show you something may god give somebody deliverance right now read it read it one to read for wisdom is a defense uh-huh and money is a defense just stop there so we know from the word that both wisdom and money is a defense now look up when the bible says you have a weapon what is a weapon something you use to both defend yourself and you can use also for attack is that true if you give me a weapon like a shield I use it for defense and the Bible says one of the many weapons money is one of them and the Bible says those weapons are not carnal the word not carnal means they are not man-made but my brother my sister this thing is man-made it was made by CBN that means this is not what God is talking about because this is man-made but the Bible says this weapon that he calls money is not carnal he said it is mighty through God that means there is a spirit are you getting what I'm saying that means this thing is only the body the same way human being is called currency anything that moves is a living thing and that means there is a spirit inside the body to move it you are only seeing the body where is the spirit that moves it that's why it can enter a house you didn't ask it to go and it will go out by itself it can enter your account and still go out because it's warfare the bible says, believe is prophet there is something they can do that can do something to the many things including this this is what we chase all around because we think this is paper no this is not this is paper yes but there is a spirit behind it and this thing respects that spirit this is what you need to understand so the spirit can instruct it to leave you and it can leave no matter how hard working you are you can receive salary and all you have is part of this left and it can be instructed to leave you it will you know it's going it's going out of your life it just touches your hand and disappears because the weapons prosperity is warfare it's not just about money to buy car and houses money is a defense it can defend the gospel it can defend a man and the bible says all those weapons they are not carnal so if you ever see this looking for anybody naira does not look for men something makes it come I, please are you getting what i'm saying if you can understand this alone at least even if you don't know how it comes you already know that it doesn't come by itself these are the mysteries that surround our kingdom you ever see anybody prosperous in the kingdom
my brothers and my sisters listen to me this is a spiritual realm you don't have to be a christian to believe it you just have to be alive this is a spiritual realm animals know it plants know it's a spiritual realm that's why you throw a seed in the ground and you cover it you don't leave it open you cover it because what happens there is none of your business now you just cover it and watch it happen and it grows to become a tree that you cannot push down a little seed when you planted it it had no roots the bible says just like you do not know the way of the wind nor how a woman how a child is formed in the womb of her that is with child you know and all of that so also you don't know the way of god the lord brought you here tonight because there are spiritual possibilities listen that are beyond the realm of the eyes are we together most times we believe only what we can see and understand and explain unfortunately in this kingdom there are things that you may not be able to explain when people come here to testify you see me sit quietly and i watch and many times i'm in shock as i watch the immutability of god's power in the lives of people the same way you are going to come up here to testify yes it's true what suddenly happens to you and then you have someone just call you and say we are sending you to us to get a job Hapa, my brothers and my sisters i've told you again and again that everybody who helps you has relatives too who i need whatever makes you to leave them and come to you is not normal that you are sitting and someone says i'm thinking of you who do you think you are no i want to help you i want to bless you you step into prepared blessings blessings that you are as sure he said master we have toiled all night and jesus looked at them you know how to fish by waiting in the night and allowing the fish to come and rest on your net then you quickly pull it in the morning that's how you were trained but let me show you another technology cast your net to the right side master but we only have left and right <clears throat> this one is not brain work now this one is not one plus one i told you one plus one plus god is equal to whatever he says the answer should be one plus one is two but one plus one plus God is not equal to two. It's not even equal to 10,000. It's equal to any answer that God puts there. So one plus one can be equal infinity. God said so. Are we together now? I'm saying this to build your faith tonight so that you will believe that God is able to do anything at all when you look at the way you got to hear about this ministry and the various ways the holy spirit worked with you till you came today you should know already that there is a god in heaven are we together now brothers and sisters i present to you this same god who can change your life who will change your life i'm saying this so that you don't just sit down and be clapping for others wow this is how god has changed this lady's life wow we are soon going to pray you must have a desperation and say lord i didn't come tonight to clap for anybody i left my journey wherever lord i know that you will visit me and i hold on to the horns of the altar while you are sitting the devil is telling you remember tomorrow by 12 your rent or embarrassment say satan go away and before the presence of god tomorrow is too far god can how many minutes does it take to do a transfer I believe him yes i do i believe him i believe him i believe him i believe he can change my life in one minute i want you to just mention everything you are trusting god to do tonight go ahead lord i believe you for this i believe you for that those outside whether you are standing by the wall whether you are standing in any of the overflows and those following online release your faith don't be distracted
any spirit that distracts you in this moment now is of the devil it's a luciferian spirit let your spirit and let your attention be open yes lord i believe you mention it don't say it's too big that's the devil too big compared to what pray believers Lord I know you are able you are able to take away this reproach from this family talk to Jesus even if you find yourself crying just continue to speak Lord you are able change this situation turn my academics around Lord, turn my finances around. Lord, I'm in a situation right now where only you, the God of heaven, can arise. Turn my ministry around. Lord, I'm confused. I don't even know where to go right now. I don't know whether to go to the left or to the right, but I receive grace. Pray. Are you praying? Don't believe as you are praying. Don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time. God of heaven. Keep praying. Sabalakatabratishiada. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and by supplication, with thanksgiving. It says, make your request known. Don't assume it is known. Make your request known. Lord, I'm here tonight because I want you to turn the situation of my family around. Lord, there is a death sentence over my family, and you have to arise for me tonight. Lord, there is a death sentence over my life. Lord, I've been delayed 10 years of my life. I am backward 10 years. There has to be a way you restore me, oh God. Lord, I'm trusting you for the fruit of the womb. The gentleman who came here, seven children lost, including twins. Lord, I'm trusting you to refire my spiritual life. Something has happened to the anointing upon my life. Something has happened to the glory upon my destiny. I'm here tonight, oh God, turn my life around. Turn my life around something has happened the signs and wonders are no more like before the revelation and the grace and the utterance is not like before i'm here for a turnaround oh god my prayer life has died i'm here for a reawakening i no longer fast i no longer pray i don't know what has happened to me i cry for help One more prayer point Lord I believe you and I believe your servant I believe that anointing and I believe in its ability to turn my life around walk on any unbelief in my heart oh God and take it out tonight go ahead and pray every spirit of doubt every spirit of fear
31. Sense a very strong anointing here already. Isaiah 61. Please participate in everything we are doing. It's going to be a very fast one, but let your spirit be open. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord, the same Lord that you are instructed to believe, hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Now listen, this is why he anointed me, because there is an agenda. But that that agenda cannot be achieved just by a well-meaning heart. It takes more than sincerity to bind up a broken heart. To proclaim liberty. Now I like this one. To proclaim. To declare that the time has come for you to walk free. It says, and the opening of prison. My brothers and my sisters, there can be men physically walking, but they are in prison. Next verse. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. It takes more than a handkerchief to comfort men. It takes the anointing. Verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Now this is the part I like. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Hallelujah. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified so the end of it is for god to be glorified but not in the current state no so anything in your family make sure you carry your family along in this miracle service don't just stand alone to receive I've told you if you are blessed and your family members are not blessed, you are not free. You are not free at all. If you are the only one who is alive and everybody is just dying like a chicken, you are still not free. Are we together now? Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let me give us one last prayer point. Father, every desire I brought here tonight, I'm not walking back with it. Lift your voice and pray. Every. Let your faith rise as you pray. Shalakata barakatosh. Talato shabra hasikete malakata. Shakata kata barakata barakata barakosh. Every desire. Visit me, O oh God, completely. The God who touches my spiritual life can touch my finances too. The God who touches my body can touch my womb too. Lord, I insist. I insist for completeness.
people I'm going to ask to come out, if the anointing comes upon your life right now, then the Lord, okay, I want to pray a prayer now. Please be your brother's keeper, whether you are inside or outside. It's because of what will happen when I pray. The anointing will come and people will act out what I'm saying physically. That's why I'm saying you should. You should just hold them. Are we together now? The Lord is asking me to release speed. Listen, speed is a very powerful thing. When that anointing comes, you will start running like Elijah. That's why I'm saying hold them. Right now, I stretch my hands inside, outside, online, and I declare, Spirit of the living God, there are men and women here who have been delayed and speed must come upon them right now i declare at the count of three one two three receive that grace i command speed speed right now speed let the hand of god come upon you the bible says the hand of the lord was upon elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of ahab down to Israel. i command speed receive it is coming on you now some of you is coming on you for the sake of your family it's not just you alone it's coming on you for the sake of your family let the chains be broken i release speed speed in one month in one month i'm prophesying that in one month what has not been done in five years in one month receive that grace i energize your spirit man speed when speed comes upon a family you will see it in the result when speed comes upon your spiritual life when speed comes upon your academics i'm praying again the angels that ride upon the chariots are bringing you speed i release that grace let that anointing come upon you speed speed in the name of Jesus Christ, speed. Shalakato sadakata, sheketo kata shalakato ziata. Now listen, fire in the spirit has many significance. Fire, this fire is a mystery. It was a reality borrowed from the realm of the spirit that we use here. Fire does not run away from any element. Fire is the only thing that all other elements must fit. Whether you put metal, the metal will be hot. Wood will be burnt rubber will be melted there is nothing that stands fire other things can stand water but not fire are we together now he said he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire when the holy spirit listen is moving to break chains he moves as fire do you know why because fire destroys every other thing Yet it is not destroyed. It is not solid. It is not liquid. Are we together? It looks like gas, but it's there. You are seeing it. You can't hold it. You can't cage fire. You can't lock it up. It's not restrained by anything. The Holy Ghost is going to move right now in this place as fire. Listen. This fire, I want you to bring those people out. This fire you see, will bring an end now believe me when i tell you this will bring an end to many captivities many captivities at the count of three i just want you to shout with me that word fire that word fire and many of you will be surprised in the name of jesus where sam there's a song in my spirit when we sing that song what's the name of that song blow 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 like a mighty wind am i correct you know what i'm talking about 
so you sing that song by the time we pray in the name of Jesus I'm stretching my hands right now Spirit of the Lord you seek to reveal yourself as fire that consuming fire no power and no spirit even spirits can be burnt by fire in the name of Jesus I declare that any operation that is not of God at the count of three by the mystery of the Holy Ghost as fire let there be deliverance let there be refining let there be the breaking of chains are you ready now one two three bring them out fire the mystery of fire I declare any chain if there is anyone under the sound of my voice and any chain has held your destiny by the mystery of this fire I'm speaking by this apostolic and prophetic grace I decree and declare to the heavens at the count of three may that fire locate chains in this place now one two three chains be broken chains be broken Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Sing below, blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Cover us with your wings. Hallelujah, Madam. Please clear the way for me. This woman, tap this woman for me. One, two, and the other person, three. Please come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. You are welcome. Your first time here? I came here last week. Okay, you were here last week and you too. Um, is, this the, is this the mama I asked to come? I think it's someone else I saw, but when you are here, we'll honor you. But I want to pray for you. Madam, look at me. I'm seeing witchcraft in your life and your family. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, man. Look at me. I know you believe in the power of God. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end every oppression of darkness. Mama, I decree and declare, in one month, your life will turn around it to surprise you. In one month. In the name of Jesus Christ, where is that man that came from my Duguri? The 
the one who came to give a testimony. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is saying I should tell you that the oppression is over. Look, I'm seeing fire. He's leaving my hands and he's coming upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, where is that man? We have to hurry up. There's, there's a lot to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I decree and declare over your life. That fire. The Lord, it looks like you are an elderly woman, but the Lord is going to use you mightily. What you are receiving now is not just a miracle yet. You are receiving an impartation. You will begin to know the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. Hold my hand. Spirit of the living God, you seek to use this dear mother in the name of Jesus Christ. You will know the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways. His fire will come upon your life and he will use you in a very mighty way. In the name of Jesus, come. You are the man that came from Eduguri. What is this? My CV. And... Your CV. You are trusting God for a job. And who is this? Hold it. Do you believe that if I pray for you, you are returning with a job? You believe that? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing upon you and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let there be that miracle. You go and return with your job, sir. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I declare that the oppression of darkness comes to an end. A complete end over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray right now, but let me just... Um, the Lord is showing me, oh dear, sometimes this time, time, time just affects you. But I'm praying right now and I'm seeing letters and I'm seeing on the letter, congratulations, listen, and I'm seeing that this is a symbolism of breakthrough. Listen, let me tell you, except God is not God, if this anointing that I'm seeing touches you, then you and your family must stand here and testify. I'm stretching my hands right now. Lord, you are showing me this. In the name of Jesus, this is a symbol of breakthrough. I stretch my hands. Every family and every person that must receive of this grace. I'm stretching my hands now. You must testify. I release upon you that grace. You must testify. I declare whatever it will translate to, whether a job, whether increase, whether promotion, I command it, I declare it, I decree it. In the name of Jesus, I command it, I decree it, I declare it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hold the hands of this lady. This one. Hold the hands of this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands right now and I declare it's time for your family to rise. I'm speaking it by the spirit of prophecy and I decree and declare every embargo that holds onto that family, I command that it's gone now. In the name of Jesus, it is gone. I curse the power of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards me. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. And there are many of you, there is no grace on the works of your hands. I look and in the spirit, I don't see the blessing of the Lord working. That's what is responsible for hardship. It's not like you are not employed or you are not doing this. But in the name of Jesus, I stand representing the spirit of God. And I stretch my hands back to you. I'm declaring still that ministry of fire. Many of you will be surprised. 
whatever it is you are involved in god is about to bring grace upon it i stretch my hands right now at the count of three may the fire of god come through your hands into your life lord i pray in the name of jesus whatever has not been working in your life i force it to work right now receive that anointing i force it to work now inside outside i force it to work now those following online i pray and i speak whatever it is that you are doing i declare the blessing i activate the blessing upon the work of your hand i take away hardship from your life in the name of jesus christ i take away hardship from your life in the name of jesus christ Sarkin Salama Sarkin Aljana Ya Bone Na Ka Bone Na Ka Sujada Ne Na Ka Sarkin Salama Sarkin Aljana The Lord is open eyes of people into where your blessing is i'm seeing fire still this fire thing coming on the eyes of people physically you will feel fire burning and ideas the lord is birthing things is is a birthing in the spirit i release that grace right now in the name of jesus lord all those who must see show them oh god where their blessings are stationed so that they stop dilly-dallying around life i decree and declare receive that grace the grace of an open eye the grace of an open vision may the lord show you where the resources of your destiny is may the lord show you where your helpers are in the name of jesus christ hallelujah This, the prayer is for everybody, eh? But this particular prayer now is for ladies. The Lord is showing me destinies that must be changed. Outwardly, you are beautiful, you are good looking, you are virtuous, you are wonderful. But in the realm of the spirit, it's not what we are seeing physically that we are seeing in, this, in the realm of the spirit. A man with an ugly situation sat down at a gate called beautiful. The gate was beautiful, but the man's life was nonsense. There are many people you can stand. I'm, I'm saying everybody, but this is ex specifically for our sisters. And it's not just the issue of marriage. I'm not talking about marriage alone. That there is a fragrance a presence that can ooze from you and bring favor to your life but many of you physically they look at you and you look like you are beautiful you are this you are that but in the realm of the spirit there are powers sitting on people's destiny in the name of jesus lift your hands i want to pray for you that that force that fail must be turned. in the name of jesus Ah, I'm seeing a strange grace that is coming on many people especially our sisters I declare any wrong identity that you are given in the realm of the spirit that is not a reflection of your true identity any exchange that has been made in the realm of the spirit so that physically you should be blessed but in the realm of the spirit you are carrying another person's destiny right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost Sisters, may that anointing come upon you now. May that grace come upon you now. I declare anyone's destiny here that has been changed and switched and manipulated in the realm of the spirit so that what you look like is not a reflection of what your destiny is. I change it now in the name of Jesus. I change it now in the name of Jesus.
Listen. A man's destiny can be exchanged. It's true. Have you not read in the Bible where kings slaughtered their children to prolong their own lives? A man's destiny can be a shadow of something else. You know you are alive, but this is not your life. You know that you are living another person's script. I'm saying it again. In the name that is above all names. Sir, come. I don't know you, but I want to pray for you, sir. God is going to turn your life around. Uh, you see this prayer that I'm saying generally, this prayer, sir, is for you. You are a shadow of your life. Of your is your dad. Where did he come from? From high there. From high there. From high there. Daddy, I'm going to pray for you. This is not just about your leg. Huh? This is about your destiny. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare Shalos Kapra Hasegete Barandos Kapriashata. Ente skalabra hafas kadabara koto supriata kataj. Mande kresko da hashabari katos kada. Natos kada, natos kada, mashada kata. Empre kete koto koto bat sada balakata. Shapres kete 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 balakata, shapriata kata. In the name of Jesus, anyone who has exchanged your destiny, sir, I decree and declare restoration now. You are the daughter, hold my hands, I pray for you. Look at me. You are a wonderful lady, huh? But bad things continue to happen in your life. Huh? You are a nice lady. Are you married? I'm married with that blessing. Don't worry. I know why I'm saying. You get what I'm saying now? Yes, sir. Because what I'm seeing, this is a spirit. You are a nice lady, but people continue to misunderstand you. Yes, sir. Yes, Good sir. things and people look at you. In the eye of many people now, you are, you are a devil... You are a terrible lady, yes, but it's sir. not true. Yes. You have a very beautiful heart. This is what happens when... Do you know that there are spirits that make sure you are misrepresented in the eyes of people? A ministry can be under this captivity. No matter... The Bible said, don't let your good be evil spoken of. You can be nice to somebody like it's happening to many of you. And people end up fighting you. You bought something for them. And they end up, you are saying, what is this? I pray for you and the person says, so you are trying to say I'm the one who is not spiritual. It's a spirit. My dear, I want to pray for you. Huh? This thing is not just about your marriage that is, you know, things have gone wrong. You are a wonderful lady. Huh? Favor will come close to you, but then never enter your life. Yes, sir. What yes, do sir. you do? I'm working in a security. Uh, you are a security? Yes, sir. Did you go to school? Yes, sir. My you are running your masters. Yes, my dear, do you believe God can change your life yes, now? Yes, sir. I believe, sir. Hold my hands. To appoint unto them. You see that? To appoint. This one is a prophet's reward. It's not just that God is saying, do this. There is something in the spirit called a prophet's reward. The possibilities that accompany an office, I declare in the name of the God of heaven whom I represent, may your life change this night in a way that will surprise you. Listen, I lift you from this security work you are doing and I put you in a position that befits your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, Daddy sir, I'm praying for your daughter in your presence. This lady will come here and give a testimony that even you as a father who said this one is the Lord's doing. Are we together now? I declare it, I decree it done right now. Hear me. I don't care whether you are working or not. If you are not in the rightful place as ordained by God, I want to pray a very serious prayer because there are people, the work you are doing is a nonsense work. That work is, it has robbed your spiritual life. It has destroyed your relationship. Because of that work, no man can see you to marry you. Demonic work that closes you everywhere. I decree and declare. I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. If you are in a place that is not your assigned place of destiny, 
I take you out of that place and I shift you to the place of destiny. I shift you. I shift you in the spirit. I shift you by prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. If the widow of Zarephath was not where the prophet met her, that's how her miracle would have gone. It matters that you are in the right place at the time God sends your miracle. Some of these things in the name of employment, they are traps of the devil. I'm not saying it's not good to work, don't get me wrong. But many of them are traps from the peace of hell. There are people whose spiritual lives have gone down from heaven to earth. Simply in the name of Job. Are we together? Nonsense Job. That on Sunday you're on your way going to church. Your boss calls you and says you must come and resume. What shall it profit a man? If you gain the... What is it? Is that the whole world? How much is the salary? Lose your soul for peanuts. I declare again. In the name of Jesus. May my God relocate someone here. By the power of the Holy Spirit. May my God relocate a destiny, relocate a family. If you are not in your assigned place, I shift you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know, listen, we're going to pray for the sick shortly. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, he will make sure they get visa. Ah, Pastor Jay, it's good to see you. There are people that the devil wants to destroy them. They will get visa to UK. They think it's breakthrough, but they have gone away from their place of destiny. God spoke to Jonah. Go to Nineveh. Jonah entered a boat on his way to Tarsus. And because of that wrong journey, people lost their properties. People lost. He entered a boat and made people to start destroying their lives. They were almost dying because a man was not in sync with seasons. Let me tell you this. It matters that God meets you at the place where your blessing is waiting for you. The devil can relocate people and, and destroy your life. There are many Nigerians outside this country whose destiny is ordained by God to be in this country. You see them roaming around like armed robbers around the world in the name of abroad. And there are others whose destinies are abroad. And the devil will make sure that he will peg them somewhere. And Isaac sowed in that land. It's not just that he sowed. The place he sowed matters. Isaac sowed in that land. Abraham, take now thy son and go. Go to a location. That's where I will meet with you. God is everywhere. But destiny does not meet with men everywhere. You must have the discernment to understand your season of visitation. I repeat this. You see me speaking like this. I'm speaking by the spirit. There are some of you. It's an instruction from God to you. Don't be careless about your life. Look at how many Nigerians. You go to embassies. And see Nigerians, they want to go abroad by fire, by force. Ask them why. They will say greener pastures. I've told you, greener pastures is not in any physical location on earth. Greener pastures is in the world. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Not when you went. Jesus instructed them and said, do not go. Go only to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that camp. Because salvation was for the Jews first. If they went to the Gentiles, they would have received a root shock. Direction. Direction. Please, in one minute before we pray for the sick, lift your voice and say, Lord, direct me. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Direct me. There is a way that cement right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a family. Direction. Your blessing is not just generically in US or UK. There are people suffering in every nation. It takes the leadership of the spirit.
Alléluia. Alléluia. Praise the Lord. Now, two things we are going to do very quickly. And I know you have been doing this, but please, I want to plead with you to do it with understanding. Most times we do things in this kingdom without understanding. That's why we are not blessed. Are we together? We are going to pray for the sick now. Don't walk out here if you expect to walk back the same way. Come here convincingly, knowing that God is going to touch you. And while we are doing that, um, your prayer, if you don't have your prayer request, please write it quickly. Write it quickly. And in case your faith, you came here with a faith that is weak, you did write some vital things, you can add it quickly. Those online, you can send, you can send your prayer request very quickly. Now, we are going to do this very fast because our time is gone. Thank God Pastor Jakes is here. Are we together? Now, overflow. Listen, let's not be rowdy. Overflow one outside. We'll walk to your projector stand. Overflow two. you also walk to your projector stand. Overflow three. Walk to your projector stand. Those who are in here, you are trusting God to touch you. To touch your family members, you can make your way and come and stand orderly in front here now. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's do that very quickly. While we are doing that, please, if you have written your prayer request, I want you to wave it. And ushers, you may find a way of splitting yourself very quickly. Let's, let's have ushers. If the ushers are not in our PR department, you can join them. And then let's make it very fast. Make sure everyone's request um, is obtained, please. For those online, I want you to believe by faith. If you are still here to write, just write it. Ushers, please. There are hands all around. Let's help out. Protocol can also help so that we'll make sure that everyone's request. If it's a text on your phone, and you don't have the opportunity to write it down while I'm praying, you can just connect with it. It's not just a ritual. Believe in what we're doing. In the name of Jesus, we stand by this corporate grace and this corporate anointing. Pastor Jax Ejimi, there. Um, Pastor Alpha, Benga, Overflow, one. Pastor Femi, Promise, Overflow, two. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's go there and let's trust God to touch the people. God has anointed this ministry and he has given us the grace to be the extension of the hand of Jesus over your life. And I want you to agree. I want you to believe. The worship team will lead us in a moment of praise and worship while we pray. And please listen. Except the people are prophesying to you or they are talking to you. Just a touch. I want you to believe by faith. Are we together? You don't have to start giving them an explanation. This is why I'm here. Don't worry. Just connect by faith. If there is a word for you, the word will be given to you. Otherwise, just believe by faith. Father, we thank you. You call this place Koinonia and this meeting a miracle service. Lord, we pray for those online and those within. We decree and declare. Let there be a free flow of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Lord, let this touch not just be the touch of men. Let it be the touch of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let every one of these people Come and testify here in the name of Jesus. Now, those of you who, when you submit your prayer request, don't just be staring. This is not a cinema. You should be praying. Are we together? Because shortly after this, I will pray on this and I will speak over our lives. Prophecy is very powerful. So whilst you are standing there, whether you are, you know, up here or down, you should be prayerful. Spiritualize your mentality. Now is not the time to laugh around and be talking carelessly. Let your spirit be alive. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be healed 
right now in Jesus' name. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we begin right now.
We are praying on your request now. I'd like you to open your heart. Just pray in the spirit in one minute. Those following from any nation of the world, I'd like you to just pray. We are just going to pray and speak over this. Go ahead. Stretch your hands. We are praying on this request. Shalabaka ruta sabre digete katabaladaba. Nataka parakato shada bre digete beledebos. Father, let your people return with testimonies. Ashala gata brada gata barakato sada brada gadech. In the cross asia sahasa barakato shabrada gata balada ba. Rakata branda gata balada bush. E prato skada brandi gadi balada bush. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let impossible situations be turned around by the Spirit of God. Lekato shata prate kato sabre de gadeba. Rakata parata parato sada prate gade balada ba. Arato sekele monda shinda ba. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Lord, it is before you these prayers are laid out. Father, we give you praise. Thank you because whatsoever we ask in your name, that you will do. Thank you for prayers. Thank you for answers. Thank you for praises. Thank you for testimonies that abound. Father, we give you praise for there is nothing impossible with you. We give you glory because we know situations that have stood hitherto unbeatable lord you will bend things tonight in the name of jesus Amen. you will change things tonight in the name of jesus Amen. you will bring breakthroughs by the power of your spirit Amen. you bring healings you bring deliverance you will bring breakthrough financial breakthroughs in the name of jesus you bring changes lord death supernatural deaths we cancel by the power of your spirit lord we give you praise we give you glory Father, we thank you. Thank you for angels, the release of angels. Angels on assignment. Angels bringing solutions and answers to prayers. Father, we give you praise because many will stand before you to give testimony and give glory to your name. For in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It has been declared in the name of Jesus every request here. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we turn it into testimonies. Yeah. And let some of them begin to manifest from this night. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let it be by the grace of God that by this time next month, you will, you will almost not have any requests to write. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is gone, but I want you to lift your hands. I want to speak over your life now. Apostle, why do we do this all the time? Because this is how you program the destinies of people. These words you see, they are not just languages. It's not just the speaking. You know, I never cease to be amazed at how people's lives change overnight just because a word the bible says he sent a word to jacob not he spoke he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel hallelujah and he blessed them saying and he blessed them not thinking saying in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that this month of September you are entering, let it be called your season of strange results. Let it be called your season of strange results. Anyone who has despised the grace of God upon your life, in the name of Jesus, may God use your life to prove a point. decree and declare over your spiritual life a new vista of insight and access into the mysteries of the spirit I release it upon you right now if you are a man of God here I pray may your ministry shift to a new dimension if you are a woman of God here I pray may your ministry enter a new dimension of power 
I declare that someone here may you encounter the power of God raw the raw power of God the same way God comes to man may his power come to you may you know the mysteries of the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life this is a family of great favor I declare if this grace is not yet speaking in your life I declare by the hand of God Almighty who brought that anointing upon my life and this house may favor practical favor begin to follow you from today in the name of Jesus Christ what you cannot do for yourself I ask my God to do it for you in this season If you're a man of God here, I prophesy to you that the next time you stand upon this altar to dispense the word of God, may you see a dimension of the spirit through your life and your ministry that will surprise you. I know that there are many of us that are trusting God for all kinds of financial breakthrough. I've taught you the principles of finances, but there is a prophetic dimension of wealth. Are we together now? And in the name of Jesus, I declare the same grace that carried a raven and it brought bread to Elijah. I decree and declare, may that same grace carry your blessings and locate you with it in this season. In the name of Jesus. I pray for every family represented here in the name of Jesus and I say this from the depth of my heart enough is enough I prophesy it again enough is enough whatever represents setbacks in any family I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that an end comes to it this night every graduate here that is trusting God for a job you heard the testimony here in the name of Jesus Christ both where you applied and where you didn't apply may the angel of the Lord see to which that a miracle job locates you those who are in business here in the name of Jesus business is spiritual the grace that will cause your business to command strange results may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus christ if there is anyone here in any kind of trouble that needs the hand of god that means if god does not step in for you you know you are in trouble i stand by the gift of prophecy and i decree and declare over your life come out of that trouble now whether it's a financial trouble whether it's whatever come out of it now in the name of Jesus Christ every attack on your destiny I decree and declare from tonight by the assignment of angels we ward off that attack in Jesus name whoever has been destined by God to help you rise and either because of witchcraft or insensitivity in the spirit he has not been able to locate you in the name of Jesus I declare I call them by the spirit and I command that they locate you <laughs> believe in every prayer that we're praying we're entering the ember months and many people associate this month with all kinds of demonic activity minus you <laughs> I say it again minus you everyone who is part of this prophetic family and connected to this family I declare the mystery of exemption over you in the name of Jesus Christ that when men say there is a casting down I welcome you into the greatest months that you have to face for this year
I decree and I declare over your life we're rounding up there are some of you nothing ever works in your life it's not like you are lazy it just doesn't work except it fails you to the point that even when you see success you are afraid of it because you know it will not last I declare not only will you be successful I command your results to last I say it again by the Spirit I command your results to last I forbid you from this experience of up today and down tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ any door that was once open and is now closed I reopen it in Jesus name I hope you believe everything I'm saying please believe it with all your heart I pray for every student here I don't know what challenge you may be having or I don't know what you are trusting God for in the name of Jesus I pray particularly for students that are supposed to have graduated and one thing or the other is keeping them I don't care what needs to be done let it be done to move you in the name of Jesus Christ I say it again let it be done to move you there are some of our young ones that just wrote post UME in the name of Jesus there are some of you who the results you have seen now from that result you will not get anything serious I change that result now I change that result now I change that result now believe it you are too young to walk in unbelief I change that result now anyone assigned here program that you must die or that your loved ones as we enter this ember whether by accident as you are moving listen no but enter it i say it again if that fake cool is doomed for accident then i take you out of it but in the name of jesus if you enter it then it must not crash especially for you my dear brothers it takes a lot for a young man to be established and it's not a blessing if you are just going old and old and old and you have to beg for tea and bread every day in the name of Jesus the grace that helps men that can take a man from nowhere and establish him because you have believed the Lord I command your establishment now Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.